This story is about a boy named Logan. He is an orphan. Since his childhood, his upbringing is taken care of by Mr. Lin. Even the servants in the house looked down on him and couldn't wait for him to disappear. As Logan grew older, for some unknown reason, Mr. Lin started to insist on marrying his granddaughter, and eventually they got married. This girl looked up to the guy just like everyone else, and the three years after the wedding, she never once let him touch her, nor did she say a single affectionate word to him. And a few days ago, her sisters organized a real conspiracy. The girls pretended as if the guy was harassing them, took a picture of it on their phones, showed it to the right people, and kicked Logan out of the house. You can say their plan worked perfectly, but how to live now, poor young man. The girls even found people who beat Logan in the street. They did it not only with their fists, but also with wooden clubs, which if you hit too hard can break a bone. But that's what triggered the boy's awakening as a warrior. A huge golden dragon appeared before his eyes, and he was in the middle of the ocean, flying over the water. Logan had no idea what was going on or who was standing in front of him. The dragon said that his apprentice could not live such a miserable life, and he was ashamed that such an apprentice had been born. Could this monster be Logan's father? Then the dragon turns into a strong, pumped-up man who has magical powers. Today Logan will inherit the red liquid of this man and can become as strong as him. The main thing is that the guy should use it correctly and develop in this direction. The final stage of the transformation is underway. Logan wakes up in the ward. The first thing he saw was a beautiful lady who saved the guy and brought him to the hospital. On his body was a large number of abrasions, which after waking up began to heal themselves. Since the guy is already clearly better, the girl's mission was accomplished, so she decided to leave the ward. Logan politely asked her name and said he wanted to return the favor for saving her. This lovely lady's name is Emily. First of all, she was very surprised to see that there wasn't a single injury on the guy's face, and secondly, she did it for her grandfather. The fact that he has a terminal illness and is confined to a wheelchair, the doctor has given him an ultimatum. So the girl hopes that she can trade her good deeds for a couple extra days of life for him. Since Logan knows a little about medicine, he offers his help and says he can see the patient. Meanwhile, with the grandfather was his personal physician, who did nothing but reassure him, and also sold his courses of pills, in general, he was just profiting from a man who was about to pass away. As soon as the guy walked into the room, he immediately said that the patient was definitely not well. If he wasn't treated properly, he would be in danger. Of course, the doctor who came here just to make money didn't like it and started to challenge everything, saying that he is the best doctor in town and he can't be contradicted. In this case, if something goes wrong, is this businessman ready to take full responsibility? He confidently answered yes, because in case of anything he can always call any incident an accident, without any regrets. Suddenly, right in front of his eyes, his grandfather gets worse, coughing up red liquid. But how could this happen? The doctor said he was fine. Emily started sounding the alarm and asking to call for an ambulance. But it was too late, and Logan was the only hope. At this point, Grandpa's body was so exhausted he couldn't hold on any longer. If the guy manages to save him, then Emily's family will never forget it, and will be grateful for the rest of their lives. Applying magic, namely the ability to restore Logan began to try to save the patient. If good people are not rewarded then soon there will be no good people left, so it is necessary to make every effort for a positive outcome. Then as you might expect a miracle happened, Grandpa slowly started to come to his senses, and the guy was lying on the floor at this point. Because he had given away too much energy at once, he needed just five minutes to recover a little bit. Grandpa will never forget that kindness, and asked what Logan wanted most. The guy replied that he didn't need anything, because if Emily hadn't saved him, he would have lost his life and couldn't help. The most important character here is solely the granddaughter. Her good deeds led to such a positive outcome. Emily was very pleased that she was being emphasized so much. She approached the guy by name and offered absolutely any help. Logan only told her his name once, and the girl filled him in. This shows that the girl is genuinely grateful 
and always listens attentively to the conversation. Emily also asked how long her grandfather had left to live. He heard the question, and was very optimistic, saying that he would live as long as he had to, not to think about it, but to invite Logan to dinner. The guy didn't want to stay here for long, because he was looking for any excuse to leave as soon as possible. At that moment, he gets a message on his phone from a gang of guys who beat him up on the street. They got word that Logan had survived, so they warned him. If you want to live, you have to disappear from this town and never be seen again. Since the guy was starting to get really strong, he didn't know what to say to that. After Logan took care of everything, he promised to come over and check on his grandfather. Emily wanted to do something to thank him, so she said she'd give the kid a ride. This old man turned out to be not easy. He even has his own personal security, since Logan now communicates directly with his granddaughter. The grandfather ordered his workers to check him out completely. In the meantime, Logan reached his home, where he was greeted from the doorstep by his disgruntled wife. Apparently she had no idea what her husband had just been through. She thought the guy just took off without warning. Turns out the bitch wasn't in the mood to hear her husband's stories today, so she just asked him to sign the divorce papers if he decided to leave the family. By the way, the wife has already found a worthy replacement for her current husband. It's time to introduce him. The name is Mr. Yang. He's very famous in his circles. No need for jealousy in this case, because Logan never loved this woman. He was just a servant who fulfills absolutely any whim. You could say it's a day of celebration. According to his wife, it's an honor for men to serve her, so if you're not satisfied, quickly sign the document and get out of here. That's what he did as of today. Logan no longer had anything to do with this family. The girl didn't like such impertinent behavior, so she said a few affectionate words to her ex-husband. And then together with their new boyfriend, they saw what a hottie picking up Logan in his expensive car and started biting their nails. They couldn't understand how this loser managed to pick up such a girl. Anyway, the old man just called his granddaughter and said he had some business with Logan. In the meantime, the personal bodyguard reported to the old man the operative information he had managed to get. In brief, they managed to find out that the boy was an orphan, and he was raised by Mr. Lin, and then married to one of his granddaughters. Based on this information, the man realized that Logan could not have any medical education. All these years he had just served the Lin family. Maybe the old man overestimated him, but then how did he manage to cure the patient? Was it just luck? Logan asked Emily to take him to a hotel to settle in and do his business, and then he raced to the girl's house to continue his treatment of her grandfather. Before he left, Emily told him that if he needed anything, he could always count on her. When the guy was alone, he realized what a mistake he had made. He realized what a mistake he'd made. How could he just cure a man? How could he justify himself? You can't just tell everyone that he's the son of the dragon and can heal people. His medical data is really good. Its effectiveness depends on the amount of spiritual power the mage has. In his head, Logan managed to find the Book of Ten Thousand Ways. It contains the recipes for making the immortality pill. It should definitely help. He asked one of the maids to bring him some herbs and a pot to make this miracle potion. Meanwhile, the old man consulted with the doctor and tried to find the best treatment option for himself. One of the options was a red fluid transfusion, but because of the patient's advanced age, the doctor made no guarantees that the old man would survive the procedure. The granddaughter begged him to let Logan come here and let her examine him again. The only thing the old man will regret is not finding a good home for his granddaughter. Logan bursts in with a pill he just made. It had a horrible odor that almost made people faint. It's a traditional pill made of local herbs. The guy was making it for the first time, but it's sure to cure the patient. The doctor looked down at the boy and asked, Do you really think you are God to create magic pills? It may not look the best, but its effect will not disappoint and there are no other options in principle, so it would be quite foolish to refuse it. Emily insisted that her grandfather try it because there was really no other option, and he didn't see how he could swallow something that smelled so bad. The doctor took the pill in his hands and analyzed it. 
he confirmed that the pill was made of traditional herbs, so there would be no harm done. And if it can cure the gentleman named Sun, the doctor will apologize to Logan and call him master. Well, since it wouldn't do any harm, Grandpa decided to try it, even though he was very afraid. The doctor wasn't sure if it would help, but the boys didn't give up hope. After taking the pill, Mr. Sun began to feel as if he was enveloped by a light spring breeze, strength running through his veins, he began to feel incredible. Life began to play with completely different colors. To put it mildly the doctor was shocked, Emily couldn't believe it, and the old man was happier than ever. He was not only cured but also rejuvenated. Now he could definitely have a transfusion of red liquid to complete the healing process. The doctor tried to ask the guy what the pill was, but no one ever tells me secrets like that. Mr. Sun called Logan his savior. For giving his grandfather life, he gave him this whole villa. From now on it belongs to Logan. The kid tried to say no, but he's not gonna get it this time. That's how you get what you've been working for for years. Today was more like a dream. The only annoying thing is that the ex-wife, who seems to be stalking around, seems to be divorced, but they haven't stopped seeing each other. She called her ex-husband an empty nester for coming on the property. Then standing next to Emily, the guy said he lives here now. Of course the sweet couple didn't believe it at first, and started laughing out loud all the way down the street. Then a very serious security guard came out of the grounds. He doesn't like to see any conflicts right under this yard resolved without his involvement. Emily ordered him to never interact with these people again, and to teach them a lesson. The girl was the first to get hit in the face. It was a pretty hard blow. She was even thrown a few meters away. Since the new fiancé knew the guard personally, he decided to ask him what was wrong. It was an order from the boss, and it is not negotiable. The guard gets paid so he should not care who he hits in the area. Today Logan was in the role of a chef, he fed his new girlfriend with a lot of different dishes. According to Emily's reviews, the guy cooks tastier than the best chefs of this city. The girl could not understand how his ex-wife decided to divorce, this man is just perfect. Logan admitted that he had never actually slept with his wife. The girl wondered if she had a chance to be the first partner he would sleep with. Apparently they both thought about it, because they got very red. The guy got so excited that his heart started to jump, which could be a sign that he cared about Emily. The guys decided to get away from this topic, and enjoy a delicious lunch, which was prepared by the new best chef of this city, according to the girl of course. In any case, she still has time to get to know Logan better, but it seems that she has already started to fall in love. On the way home, the chauffeur told the girl that this guy did not have a good reputation, should not get close to him, because Emily is the eldest granddaughter of the Sue family, a real pearl, her boyfriend should be appropriate, and this one is not suitable. Certainly from the chauffeur to hear such a thing was offensive, who is he to talk about it, especially about the man who saved his grandfather? Despite the bad reputation and so on, the girl was sure that by the end of the month this guy would definitely become famous and rich. Three days later, the guy was sitting in the middle of the forest, trying to perform some magic, but the energy of the mountain he was on wasn't enough to make it work the way it should. Luckily there's a lot of spirits gathering in the area, so hopefully it won't take long for Logan to perfect it. But still it will not be enough, he needs to become even stronger as soon as possible. The boy already dreams of finding a legal way to marry Emily. Only now he catches himself thinking that apparently he really fell in love with this girl. In his head he was thinking that he did not deserve her. It is very disturbing. Now Logan's biggest challenge is to get to the top and become the man who's worthy of it, and to make sure no one even thinks about questioning that. Meanwhile, his ex-wife's new husband, along with his gangster friends, have approached the guy's new territory. They were armed with bats and probably each of them has some cold weapons in their pockets. Today they wanted to beat up Logan alone, they also wanted to talk to Emily, but she is not here. Before the guys start their dirty business, the boy decided to warn them that the original owner of this villa is Mr. Sun, and it is unlikely that the bandits will get away with breaking into the territory of such an important man, 
and it will be even worse if they beat up a close family friend. The guys really wondered why they had to go to all this trouble, so they decided to ask their boss what they should do. He ordered Logan to be destroyed and said he'd take full responsibility. The men heard that and immediately ran into battle. Too bad they didn't listen to the guy. You could say he was saving their lives. Since his strength had increased significantly, with a single slap, the guy got rid of one bandit. The blow was so powerful that the opponent flew a few dozen meters away. The other bandits started to say they probably wouldn't be able to beat him. So the groom hit him and said they had to fight if they wanted a secure old age. Then Ian got a call on his phone. It was his girlfriend. She said that her grandfather was about to lose his life and needed to go to the hospital immediately. Logan asked what happened to Mr. Lin. But the groom said that the guy had nothing to do with that family anymore and no one would tell him anything. Despite all the bullying by Mr. Lin, the savior and the man who raised the guy, Logan decided to try to contact the doctor who took care of the old man and asked him for help. In order not to waste time, the guy told the thugs to take him to the hospital by car, which they liked to agree to. Meanwhile, the ex-wife was in tears, begging the doctor to save her grandfather somehow. She said she would pay any money, but the problem was not only in them. This hospital is simply not able to perform an operation of this level. Then Jan came to the doctor. He asked him to make the old man last at least another week, which would be enough time to solve everything with the documents and properly rewrite the property. Suddenly Logan walks into the hospital, along with a doctor who has recently become his friend. They asked to use the operating room to treat Mr. Lin's emergency. The second doctor was very happy to have such a professional. He said he would organize everything. The sweet couple was told to get out of here because they'd only be in the way, and Logan went into surgery with the doctors to help the man who raised him. The anger of the young was overwhelming. Apparently even the ex-wife was beginning to question whether she'd made the right choice when she divorced her husband. Meanwhile, Emily and her grandfather were relaxing on the balcony, looking at the beautiful views. Son assumed his granddaughter was thinking about Logan. She tried to deny it, but Grandpa said that he had lived a long life, and it was not easy to deceive him. So Emily decided to ask him directly how Grandpa would feel about their relationship. He said that if his granddaughter wants it, he will organize everything for her. I asked him to invite him to visit in three days and talk about everything. Grandpa would do anything for his granddaughter, as long as Logan could handle the responsibility. If everything goes well, the girl will publicize the relationship. The man who is not needed by the Lin family will be needed by the Sue family. In the meantime, good news from the hospital. The operation was successful. Mr. Lin will be able to return home tomorrow. Mr. Lin was very grateful for the help. Although the kid grew up in this family, but they treated him worse than a dog, despite the fact that he did a lot of useful things. Since there was a divorce, no one would allow the guy to give the gentleman a pill, because of this had to do just that, call a specialized doctor, and ask him to make a quality operation. The doctor asked not to call him officially anymore because he considers Logan his master, and that's not up for discussion, so they're clearly friends. Then Ian came up to the guys, along with his assistants, who had brought the guy here, by the way. It was obvious from their faces that they didn't want to fight. As they say, you remember shit, that's what it is. There was a security guard in the building who saved the day last time. When Ian saw him, he didn't want to fight either. The bandit thought he'd be the first to say hello but he didn't. The man went to Logan first, and apparently forgot about Ian. Once it was over, the guard said he would give Logan a ride home in his car. Ian was in shock. He couldn't understand what was going on. He even dropped his cigarette. The thing is, at Emily's behest, the guard had organized a small banquet in the guy's honor, and urged him to come. Logan wanted to refuse since he wasn't really interested but the guard went to extreme measures, he knelt down and said, If Logan doesn't attend the banquet, Emily will fire the guard and never take him to the gate again, so you have to come at least to save the man his job. Well, since the banquet was organized at Emily's request, the guy agreed, he found out the time, the address, and said he would definitely stop by. The security guard and all his co-workers were happy to have a job to do, 
Ben promptly handed the guy an invitation. Ian got very demoralized at his workers, sent them far away, picked up his phone and started calling someone. From the look on his face, he was up to no good. The banquet was held at the Palace Hotel, which is the most luxurious six-star hotel. The people who live there are the real elite of society. All the guests were very well dressed. Since Logan doesn't attend such events, he didn't even have anything to wear but a t-shirt and old jeans. To be honest, he felt very awkward. The first people he met were former classmates. They had no idea it was a party in Logan's honor, so they treated him like a regular classmate. The guy refused to dialogue with them, arguing that he had an appointment with someone else. This made the guys laugh, mostly the woman, who assumed Logan had come here to apologize to his ex-wife. Apparently she finds it funny to make jokes about people's hurt feelings. Of course, the guy did not tolerate such insults, and replied that for those years that they had not seen each other, the girl had not changed much except for more wrinkles. In response to this classmate began to try to threaten her authority, which is practically non-existent. In general, a real quarrel broke out between them, just a little bit more and it came to a fight. But between them became another classmate, it was a cute girl of low height in a gorgeous red dress, in his student years it was the person who cared about Logan more than for himself, and never gave him an offense, by the way her name is Ruby. He wanted to punish Ruby for her courage, so he threatened her that he would do it, and no one would say a word. Logan was a simple man, he sees danger and eliminates it, so he gave the upstart a hard punch in the face with his fist, so that he would know his place and how to behave. The girls were shocked. It looked really cool and unexpected at least from Logan. At that moment the guy looked completely calm. He just did what he had to do. No doubt Ruby was delighted. It was too impulsive an act not worth getting into. Any adequate man would say that it was definitely worth it. Because today they're laughing at one girl tomorrow at another. They should be taught a lesson. This lady was obviously upset that her young man got punched in the face. Especially by someone like Logan. She said she was going to bury the kid right there, and ordered her guards to grab him. The kid's personal bodyguard, his name is James by the way, as soon as he heard the sounds of the fight, went straight up to the floor, he personally apologized for overpowering his master danger. The classmates didn't even know what to say about it, they were just in shock. They began to beg for forgiveness and mercy, but Logan would have the last word. James also heard that someone was going to bury someone here, and to do that, they'd have to get rid of the floor. The girls started begging the guy to forgive her for the sake of their past together. Logan apologized and said she deserved it, so he wouldn't mind burying her right here. The guy and James went into a separate room with a lot of security, and they gave him a gift from Mr. Cheen. Since the guy was not interested in tobacco and alcohol, he only took a credit card and hoped there would be no more gifts. James also announced that the Sioux family was planning a business party with all the bigwigs in town, which meant that Logan wasn't the only one invited. Unfortunately, the guard had to invite the same Lynn family, and now he was worried that he had offended Emily by doing so. Logan didn't mind trying to work it out. James was extremely grateful. For this he gave the guy his whole outlet, and hoped that it would be enough as a thank you for his help. Logan pretended that this gift was nothing special, but deep down he was very happy, because she this outlet can make a lot of money. Deep in the night after the banquet, the guy went outside, when suddenly his phone rang, it was Grandpa Lin. He said he wanted to talk to Logan right away. Without wasting a minute, the boy went straight to him, and soon he was in the same room with him, holding his hand. Grandpa admired the young man, even though he hadn't treated him well when he was a kid, the guy still came to the rescue. Logan asked him not to say that, because if it hadn't been for his grandfather, he probably wouldn't be alive right now. As it turned out, Lynn had called him to talk about it. It turns out Logan wasn't really an orphan. Twenty years ago, when the family was fishing, by the sea at that time the young grandfather met a strange man. He stood over the water, and in his eyes there was not a bit of fear in the face of warships. During a fierce battle all the warships were destroyed, he was like an invincible god of war. After the battle, he entrusted Lin with something, 
it was little Logan. The warrior promised to take the newborn as soon as his wounds healed, however, the next twenty years spent like a blink of an eye. It was because of his blessing that the Lin family took their current position. Grandpa was in tears, talking about how the family felt bad for the guy, and asked him to have lunch with him just once. The next morning, the guy went to the Sioux family's mansion to see the family. He is now telling Mr. Sien about the new pills he brought with him. Their main function is to replenish the life force by inflaming the chi energy in the patient's body. Then a man named Riley walks into the room, with three bodyguards. He's no ordinary hustler. He's wondering where Logan learned how to make these pills. The guy introduced himself and answered that he was somewhere on the second level of chi purification. He had no clan or family. This answer made the master laugh a little, because it was impossible not to be a member of a clan and have such abilities. They are not taken from the air. Recipes are passed down from generation to generation. But this is still a flower. Most of all Riley was interested in whether the guy's abilities do not have demonic essence. Emily sensed that she was getting a bad smell and started to stand up for the guy. Because in her opinion, a man with a demonic essence couldn't cure a person in front of all the witnesses. Such things were just beyond the control of bad people. Riley assured her that there were many ways to do such things. You could cure a person with firewood, miasmas and poisonous insects. No one's ever seen the guy practice, so how do you know he's innocent? On the one hand, that's the right point of view, but on the other hand, the master also has no evidence to prove otherwise. Riley was clearly tense, so Logan tried to calm him down, but to no avail, in response to this kindness, the master hit the guy and said that only force could judge them. Logan tried his best to refuse the fight. After all, this master is a friend of Mr. Sien. How can he look him in the eye after beating up his friends? Riley said if the guy could even touch him, then he would recognize his strength. In that case, the guy had to accept the challenge and unleash his potential a little. The fight lasted just a few seconds. The guy even overdid it a little. Riley fell to the floor and couldn't move. Logan must have pressed a couple of pain points that could close the body for a certain period of time. Mr. Sien was really excited. He didn't think the kid was that strong. Emily didn't stay away either. She asked how the guy was feeling and if his arm hurt. The guy scared the hell out of the girl, because if he lost this fight, he would have been kicked to the curb. Emily pinched him for that rash act. Now he was really hurting. In any case, Logan was on his feet so there was no need to worry so much about him. The girl hoped it would be the same in the future. The phrase in the future caused the guy to ask a few questions as to what it could mean. Emily was embarrassed to answer, and said that it just occurred to her. Standing on the balcony guy to invite one more person to a business meeting, if of course it could be done. In principle Emily was not against it. It is not difficult for them to add another plate and a spoon to the table but whether this person is really needed at the business meeting. The girls wanted to know what kind of relationship they had with Logan. The boy hesitated and didn't know what to say. It was even insulting if he hadn't made up his mind since those days. Well, if there was no clear answer, the girl knows what to do in such cases and how to get an answer to her question in a different way. Making cute eyes, she asked if she was going to be bullied in the future. Would Logan come to her rescue? The guy vowed that as long as the girl was near him, no one would dare touch her, then took her hands and pulled her close to him so that she could feel the seriousness of his intentions. Unfortunately, Sien came to the balcony and interrupted this romantic moment. The thing was that Grandpa had gotten a rare medicinal plant for the boyfriend. He couldn't help but tell about it. By the way, Emily was going to the auction today, so she asked Grandpa if she could take the boyfriend with her. He was fine with it, but there's one problem. He needs to be dressed for the event. To solve this problem, the guys quickly moved out to the store. Emily led the boy to one of the most expensive boutiques in the city. To put it mildly, Logan felt awkward. He realized that he would not soon be able to buy such things for himself. But if the guy would finally start dressing up a lot, the others would stop looking down on him, so he would have to go to the store as soon as possible. There was a gorgeous white suit that fit Logan perfectly. He wasn't used to such things, but as they say, you get used to good things quickly. 
and why only before Emily had not noticed that her lover was a real model. From so many compliments the guy was even shy. They still looked down on the guy and smiled snidely at him. They had heard that Emily was going to the auction, so Ian decided to warn her right away that he was going to buy everything there. They had heard that Emily was going to the auction, so Ian decided to tell her that he was going to buy everything there. This information upset the girl a little, but where he had so much money to say so confidently. Finally it was time for the auction itself, the event was held in one of the largest shopping centers of this city. The participants took their seats and were already actively raising the bids for the offered goods. As expected Ian named the most huge sums in the room, and his wife just praised him for it. The highest price he named was 1.5 million, but when everyone fell silent because they had the opportunity to compete. Emily quoted three times that amount, 5 million, the whole room was speechless. After counting to three, the announcer banged the gavel on the table and congratulated girl number eight on her ownership of the eternal love ring, and now the auction took a fifteen-minute break. Everyone stood around and applauded the young couple. Only the haters stood back and bit their nails. Eventually the ex-wife couldn't take it anymore and started pointing her finger in Logan's direction. She wanted to transfer that ring for her wedding and Emily ruthlessly denied her that opportunity. The guys smiled and said, You can't buy a new ring because if the person is used, the ring must be the same. For some reason Ian decided to be a suck-up. He reassured his wife and said that if he had known in advance, he would have given in right away. Apparently a lot of women like this ring. Meanwhile, for the girl, they brought her a new ring for five million. By the way, and who said that Emily really likes this ring? In fact, the girl thinks that such a couple as Jan and this weak-minded do not deserve such a ring. It was bought only out of principle, not to give it to other hands. In general, rings with this design the girl does not sympathize. So right in front of her current boyfriend's ex-wife, she throws the ring in a small body of water. If someone needs it badly, that person can go and get it. To put it mildly, it was a shock, so she's the kind of person who can throw away a $5 million ring so easily. In the backdrop of this event, Jan promised his wife to buy the last lot of the auction for her. Logan really felt sorry for the ring that Emily had thrown away, and she in turn was pleased. There were plenty of rings like it. Moreover, it was necessary to do it. A person that trying to humiliate another person would be humiliated first, in short it was just sweet revenge. Meanwhile, the last item of this auction was shown on stage. On the mannequin hung a simply beautiful necklace with a huge diamond. Every woman dreams of such a necklace, but not everyone can buy it. Logan considered it a matter of honor to buy it for his beloved. So he snatched the number in his hands, and began to raise the rates, Meanwhile the cost reached already 3.5 million. In order not to say too many words, the guy decides to raise the price immediately to 5. In the hall at once all quieted down, people did not understand what kind of man is ready to lay out such a sum. This time Ian wasn't going to give in, and he didn't understand why Logan was the one holding the number, and not his girlfriend. The next price that was offered was 5.5 million. Ian's face clearly lost its joy. Apparently he realized he couldn't win. The card the guy got as a gift has 10 million on it, plus 35 million in profits from the shopping street. Even if you spend more than half the money to buy this jewelry, there's still money left over. It's a win-win. Next price is 6 million. I couldn't believe Logan was still pulling it off. Let's see what kind of figure it comes to. To any increase in price, Logan responded instantly with the same. Each increase was always in the neighborhood of 500,000. Toward the end when the amount became too large, Jan began to raise each bet by 10,000, so I shameful figures should be ashamed to bring in such an establishment, but in desperation he forgot about it. To keep it all going, Logan had to make one of the toughest decisions of his life. From a bid of 8 million, he raised it to 20 million. The guy gets ownership of a piece of jewelry called a crystal kiss. After the auction, the youngsters ran out of the room, because people started literally chasing them. They got into the car, and finally had a moment to be alone. Logan had really managed to surprise a lot of people with just one wave of his hand, and he had a big future. But the guy never got cocky, 
and he said it was all thanks to Emily. And now the solemn moment, the process of putting the jewelry on the beloved woman, she of course happily agreed. You could say it fit her perfectly. From the outside it may seem that Logan is more happy than the girl, but it is not so, in fact, she is overwhelmed with great happiness, which she is just shy to show. At such a crucial moment, Logan decided to ask Emily if she would marry him if he could get back on his feet in the future. The girl took his hand and said, When true love is born between people they don't care about each other's status. Besides, Emily is sure that in the near future the guy is going to grow incredibly in all plans. While Logan was trying to propose to his new girlfriend, his ex-wife was swimming in a body of water and trying to find the ring Emily threw away. How quickly things changed. Another accident happened at a construction site. It would seem that this place is surrounded by mountains and rivers. They promise riches. Isn't that a good sign? Everything could be written off as an accident, but a worker falling from scaffolding sounds impossible. Hundreds of screws could have come loose at the same time. Now there are hardly any people on the site. Some are sick, some have family problems, and there are fewer and fewer of them because of what's the job worth. When Logan came to the site, he said something else serious had happened. James was so happy to see him. The guy suggested maybe it's the mountains and the rivers. Fog comes down from the mountains and forms a moisture accumulation. No matter how hard you try to fight it, it's almost impossible to fix. But what do we do now? Maybe we should stop work until the problem is solved. Logan said there's no need to suspend anything yet. The problem is that if you fix it, even after repairing it, the problems are bound to continue. It's a vicious circle. Even a master like Jacob doesn't have the power to help in this situation, and Logan just appeared out of nowhere and started handing out instructions, which seemed a little strange to the master. Jacob agreed to do as the boy suggested, but if it didn't work out, he had to apologize to the master. Jacob agreed to do as the boy suggested, but if it didn't work out, he had to apologize to the master. So they agreed to let time judge them. A worker was invited to the site, given a shovel in his hands, and told to dig down at a certain spot. The hole had already reached a depth of five meters, but nothing could be found. James began to doubt the whole thing. If he offended the foreman, he wouldn't find another one like him. Maybe he had called Logan for nothing after all. When suddenly the worker in the pit shouted that he had found something. It was some kind of magic box, and inside it lay a blade. It was a rather unconventional shape, the kind you can't just buy in a store. The guys couldn't believe their eyes. This object that was found brings real trouble to those who are near it. From now on you can say for sure this construction site is cursed. There will absolutely always be some kind of action going on here. What to do now in this situation? A huge amount of money has been invested in this project. The houses are almost finished. Jacob recognized that there was nothing he could do to help the situation. Maybe the guy knows what to do. Logan looked at the box and said he would take it back to his house to avoid any more problems. James was very grateful. If it worked out, he would do anything for the guy. You could say it was another great opportunity to make money and raise his status. Jacob finally realized that Logan wasn't a normal person, so he wondered where he got his powers at such a young age. The boy replied that he had no family or clan, so he wasn't going to talk about it. Unbelievable, and why Jacob hadn't heard of him before. It was decided to take this box to the mountains where the guy usually meditates, there he was able to remember that he felt a similar energy from Mr. Sien. Apparently someone is targeting their family, and wants to harm wondering just who it needs. Logan sits down in his favorite pose for energy, but this time he's going to use it to destroy the enchanted object. By the way, there's an important meeting tomorrow, and Logan refuses to believe he won't be able to catch the culprit by then. It's the next day, it's still four hours away from the start of the event, but you can already see many famous faces. The event itself will be held in the garden, the final preparations have been completed. The Lin family also came to this big event. They have heard that it's all for the sake of one man who will appear here very soon, already can't wait to find out who it is. As Logan appears on the grounds, his ex-wife notices him immediately, 
and can't understand how this loser managed to get to such an event. The girl assumed that the guy had used her family's name to get here. Logan smiled and said that the family name didn't mean anything at this party. Of course that made her angry, and she even complained to the guard that Logan had used her name. Because the guards were smart, they grabbed the woman by the arms and carried her off the premises. This was done because the ex-wife broke two rules. First she made a big fuss and second she slandered a guest, which is strictly forbidden in these parts. Then Emily came on stage and made a statement to everyone. Logan is the guest of honor at tonight's event. Anyone who disagrees is fired. Now Ian realized Logan was the guest of honor everyone was talking about. Emily invited him to the stage and once again publicly introduced the man. The guests were shocked to say the least. After all, this guy is a common swindler. How can such a queen have anything to do with him? The guests of honor began to demand a word from the guy as to why he just stood there silent. Logan immediately picked up the microphone and began his speech. He may not look worthy of Emily right now, but one day everyone standing here will change their minds. It was a very confident speech. The guests even started clapping and saying nice things about the guy. He didn't really expect to be on stage tonight, and he didn't prepare for it. But despite that, he managed to pull it off perfectly. As it turned out, the person who asked for the guy's speech was a close friend and business partner of Mr. Sien. His name is Oliver, since their cooperation is unavoidable. Today will be the perfect opportunity to get to know each other better. Mr. Oliver sells building materials in the city. Looking at this businessman Logan noticed something strange. On Oliver's hand was a bracelet that radiated negative energy and brought people only grief and suffering. With all due respect the guy asked to remove it. Now he has a very important task to do. He has to explain that people who have lost their lives do not need money anymore and the living should not come into contact with such bracelets. If Oliver continues to wear it, he or anyone in his family could suffer greatly. Of course, such a high-ranking man would not believe the words of a common swindler, but rather his son, who gave him the bracelet. Oliver reacted to the kindness and care with only stupid anger, and immediately called his guard to deal with Logan, so help people, it's the same as usual. The ambulance immediately went to the battlefield to do his job. Beforehand, Oliver asked Mr. Sien not to hold a grudge. The girl did not want to interfere in this conflict, because she already put the guy in an uncomfortable position, and he is perfectly able to get out of such situations. But if he doesn't succeed this time, then he won't be able to get a foothold in this city. In any case, the girl would believe in him the most and until the very end. Meanwhile the fight started, Logan easily blocked the first blow of his opponent and made a strong fist right in his nose. His opponent flew back with great speed. Now Oliver realized that Logan is not quite an ordinary guy, as it may seem at first glance, so he clearly panicked. The bandit decided to use magic to win the fight, and he still doesn't know that the guy has similar abilities. The first skill he decided to use was the combat energy punch. It unleashes a powerful energy flow in all directions. The bandit seemed to be at about the second or third level of chi purification, which was about the same level as Logan. But that was okay, the guy was confident that he would be able to handle this opponent. When the bandit realized that their forces were almost equal, he decided to act to the fullest. The second ability he possessed was to disappear, in his energy, for a certain period of time, the bandit could use invisibility. This time he did everything too trivial and attacked from the back. Logan was just waiting for an attack from where, so he was fully prepared to respond in the same way. They started a so-called tug-of-war, whose blow was stronger than the one that would stand Logan was a little weaker this time, so he fell to his knees. The bandit decided to take advantage of this moment, charged his leg with magic, jumped into the air and prepared to deliver the strongest decisive blow. The blow was very powerful indeed, and after it a huge crater appeared on the battlefield. If the bandit managed to hit the guy with his foot, there was little chance to survive. Emily held on to the pendant the guy had given her and only hoped for the best outcome. Judging by the bandit's smile, for some reason he was sure that Logan was no longer alive, but before he smiled, he had to be sure. 
Suddenly a hand appears out of the thick smoke and moves towards the mercenary, apparently not as good as one might think. The guy appeared to be alive, and overwhelmed by a great deal of anger, it was time to strike back. Logan grabbed both his hands, twisted them together, and kicked the thug straight upward with a hard kick, and then he was in for a not-so-gentle landing, body against the hard asphalt. It was an unqualified victory, the mercenary couldn't even move, but he said he recognized his defeat. This guy probably had more fractures than the others, and he would have to spend eternity in more. Sien was very happy about this victory. He didn't expect the guy to be so good at all. And Emily in turn was happy that her young man wasn't hurt. Despite the guy's extensive experience, Oliver still wasn't sure that the bracelet could bring harm to his family. Logan didn't make him believe it, but just warned him it wasn't about his family anyway. In that case, Oliver proposed a bet. If nothing bad happens in three days, the guy gets on his knees and apologizes. And if it does, it's the other way around. It would happen in front of the whole town. In that case, Logan agreed to accept the argument. Meanwhile, some people were watching him from the bushes. They didn't seem to have the best intentions. Somehow they managed to find out that the guy was at the third stage of chi purification which was not a terrible indicator for them, so they began to plan an assassination attempt. Meanwhile, the evening came, the party was in full swing, people were dancing and drinking. The guy's ex-wife showed up at the event again, but alone and on business. The grandfather gave a gift for the guy, and the girl brought it. He couldn't come himself because he's still physically very weak, he didn't want to seem rude to Sue's boyfriend and family, so he made such a small gift. Logan said that he accepts it, and to his ex-wife that she can be free. I wondered what was inside, the first thing I could see was an envelope, and an inscription to my dear son, there was also a keychain with a dragon on it, what could that mean? Logan had a rather strange reaction to this gift, did grandpa give a letter, what did he write there? Emily grabbed the guy's hand and told him not to open it here because there were too many strangers around, best to do it later. The guy agreed and the decision was made to read it after the party. When they arrived at the house, Emily showed the guy that there was a secret room in their house that they could go into and read there, so that definitely no one would see anything. The girl was so careful that even Logan started to get a little worried. It was just a letter. Okay, it was time to read it. In his letter, Lynn asked the boy not to go to the capital and try to find his mother, no matter how much you want to do it, but you must restrain yourself. The main thing to remember is that you have a special power, and your mom is a normal person. Her name is Mia. The future is blurry, but you must remember that you are the guardian of the dragon. The text was actually quite confusing, and there's a question of how to measure that power. Looks like this world isn't as simple as Logan imagined. There's still too much to learn. To keep his mind busy, he decides not to eat in the house for too long, but to go back to the party with his beloved. In fact, She's been waiting for him for a while. When suddenly, right in the center of the banquet, an unknown man runs in and says that there is trouble, something has happened in the house. As soon as Mr. Oliver entered his house, his mistress went crazy and started waving a kitchen knife. This guy managed to escape to call for help. But even so, who can go there, and what can he do to help at all? Logan said he'd go there, even if he couldn't look. He should at least take a look at what was going on, because he'd said right away, that bracelet was a dangerous thing, and it was best to take it off right away. Emily grabbed his hand, smiled, and told him not to worry, everything would be all right. Logan smiled back and said that next to such a woman, he was no longer afraid in this world. And then immediately set out on the road, to get to Oliver's house as soon as possible. Meanwhile, in the house, the situation had settled down a bit. The guys had chained the crazy woman to the column. This method will work for a while, but it can't last forever. Don't worry, Oliver's already called in a specialist. Well, it's time to face it. Apparently the guy was right. It was the bracelet. As it turned out, Oliver wasn't too happy that it was Logan who had come to the rescue. The bracelet was still studying that negative energy that made people go crazy. If it wasn't removed now, it would be too late. 
Then his favorite son came down to the hall and started defending his gift, that he had brought it from the temple. How could such things just be thrown away? This temple is hundreds of kilometers away. Would someone who is so far away do harm on purpose? Logan looked at his son and asked him to tell the truth about where he had gotten the bracelet. As there was no clear answer, Logan decided to leave, but when these people came to him to ask for help, he would remind them of everything. Oliver was sure that everything would be fine after the boy left, but he was wrong, along with his son. Just then Jacob walked in, he had been called in to see the victim as soon as possible, and tried to treat her. Oliver was definitely shocked when the master said hello to Logan, they didn't know they knew each other. Jacob figured the guy couldn't handle the situation, so he immediately decided to ask how bad it was. Since Logan wasn't allowed to act, Jacob would try to go it alone. As soon as he tried to approach, the frantic mom tore the bond she'd been chained with, the bracelet making her more and more powerful by the minute, a process that could go on indefinitely if it wasn't stopped. Jacob said that someone had possessed the woman and that his skills would not help. Oliver was very angry and wanted to beat up the master, because if something happened to his wife, he would never forgive a specialist who couldn't help. Jacob made it clear that Logan would be much stronger than he was, so he would have to ask him for help and everything would work out. In the end, because there were no more options, Oliver went to ask Logan for help. The guy immediately reminded him that he had promised him to kneel before him if something happened. For Oliver this punishment seemed too strong, so he offered to solve this issue with days, for example with the sum of fifty million. It was actually a really impressive amount of money, but what to do when the money ran out, you had to put things in perspective. Looking around, Logan saw many beautiful shelves, the contents of which would cost much more than fifty million. It's not that it's hard to help the guy, it's just that he'll have to spend a larger amount of power, which is hard to recover later. In that case, Oliver offered to take the entire contents of those shelves if the problem could be solved. It was an offer that couldn't be refused, so Logan agreed without much thought. Now it was time for Oliver to do the most important thing, which was to take off the bracelet. Logan began to envelope it with his energy, thus suppressing its negative power which from head to toe soaked the woman. Then the bracelet was destroyed, and at that moment the curse was completely gone from the girl. She was very weakened, perhaps she would need a doctor to return to her normal state. Now the interesting question is where the son who gave his father this miracle bracelet went. He was already on his knees, calling himself a poor wretch, and begging forgiveness in front of everyone. Apparently because of his intense fear, he got the idea to escape from his own home. But this time the personal bodyguard worked perfectly and caught the little escape lover. It would not be convenient to conduct interrogations in this place, so Logan asked to take this boy to his house. So they did, and in the dead of night, the boy was taken to Logan's villa, and there he was beaten a little, so that he would be more willing to give some valuable information. From that moment on, the bodyguard whose name was Jack, said he would follow Logan, and he didn't even need a paycheck, just enough to feed him. How everything changed in an instant. Anyway, this son of mine met a man at the temple a month ago, who said this bracelet would protect the whole family for a whole year, and the guy agreed to take it. Without even thinking about the fact that free cheese is only in the mousetrap. This all happened in the best temple in the country, who would have thought there were such people in it. Usually the boy does not accept such gifts just like that, and from just anyone, as his family is engaged in business. With the man who gave the bracelet the boy was barely acquainted, he said that this bracelet was inherited from his older brother, who also wore it. The reason why he gave it to him was purely for a good cause, and after much questioning, he told me where to find an expert. Zonmingfu, he is one of the biggest clans in the city, even though they work with dark energy a lot of people went to them for help. So knowing the methods of this clan, the guy still went to them to ask for help. Yes it is true, perhaps stupidly, but it is not every day that a person can be offered such help. And as for what kind of energy they use, what difference does it make who they pay if the essence of the work is the same? The kid didn't even realize it could turn out like this. 
Logan was convinced for the umpteenth time that he never understood rich people, and they obviously had their own ideas. Logan asked Jack to take the poor guy home. At first glance, this clan seems to be in the business of luring rich people into their trap, but if you think about it, isn't the Sioux family their goal? It's good that the guy took the initiative that night. If someone else had gone, most likely no one would have found out this information. Given the discovery at the construction site, Logan will never believe they don't lead on the move and he's on the Sioux family. As for suspects, you have to start with the Xianming clan. It's a really strong clan that specializes in curses, their elder is at the top of his spiritual development, and their methods are always valid. This clan is also closely connected to the local bureaucracy, and is behind a lot of incidents that have been going on lately. From this we can conclude that the clan is just a tool in someone's hands, we need to deal with them to find out who is really behind the scenes, whose name they are hiding. But there's only one problem. So far the guy's not strong enough to pull this kind of thing off. But that was okay. With so many herbs, Logan would be able to make great progress by nightfall. The herbs looked good, but their quality was questionable, and they were not very useful. In the morning, the guy already had a sixth level of chi purification. Jack woke up early in the morning, and had time to clean the house. He was also told to tell him that Logan was invited to lunch at Mr. Sien's house. There was no reason to be there at noon. Since the bodyguard was behaving very well, the boy personally began to reassure himself about his health, and asked him whether he was eating or not, and where he had slept today. The food was all right, but the guard slept outside, it was not right, there were a lot of empty rooms in the house, so he could easily choose any of them and sleep there to avoid getting sick, Besides, Logan promised to show him a couple of exercises that would make his muscles hurt much less. He was insanely grateful for the accommodations. Since it was almost lunchtime, the guy got into his car and drove to Mr. Sien's house. Usually they just call him by his name, but today it was too formal. Something must have happened. Inside, Logan was met by Emily, and some guy who did next to her, the first thing he said was I'll never believe that a ragamuffin like you son saved Mr. Sien. Rude enough for a first meeting. The most important thing in treating a patient is quality ingredients. Which apparently this guy has plenty of. Today he brought the old man a Tianshan snow lotus, which is a plant that can give a man life. I wonder what all the fuss is about. Logan's proven his credibility. In order not to fall face in the mud, the guy called this lotus some kind of rottenness, and took out of his pocket his pill of spiritual perfection, which he worked on all night, it significantly increased spiritual power. The show-off guy really thought about it. And then he called the pill a regular candy that they sell at the second school. They got into a big fight, and started calling each other some unpleasant words, generally from the outside it looked like a fight between two little boys in kindergarten. Then this upstart let himself grab Emily's hand, and called himself the future son-in-law of the Sioux family. In his opinion, the fact that Logan saved Mr. Sien does not make him the main candidate. This guy also positioned himself as a very rich man, both partners should be from good families, then they will never have money problems. It's the same thing again, rich people only talk about money, they have forgotten about everything human, are they really unable to think about something other than money? What's the point of a tank if the partners don't love each other? Moreover, the future is in talent and strength, not in money. The man was really pissed off for such hurtful words and a burn on his arm, so he wanted to settle the matter with his fists. Logan didn't even move, and this upstart broke his arm on his body, and that was the end of the fight. Even the bodyguards were shocked at the outcome.
The first part of the story ended with a conflict between Logan and a representative of another family named William, which began because the stranger pretended to be Emily's young man and openly declared it to the whole house. Of course, Logan was not satisfied with this arrangement of events, and he began to try to verbally put this daddy's boy in his place. Since his IQ was below average, his brain couldn't handle such a meaningful load. Since there was nothing to say, the kid decided to attack Logan to solve the issue with his fists, but while trying to make the first blow he broke his hand on the main character's body. Although the fight was over in one second, in the future, this moron promised Logan to deal with him. Mr. Sien was very upset, because he can really bring a lot of trouble. His father is the biggest industrialist. Not only local enterprises try to get their support, Logan has caused a lot of trouble. He kept up his enthusiasm, and finally decided to tell me what had been going on lately. He dug up a knife at a construction site a few days ago, and it was cursed, just like the bracelet Oliver was wearing. It was initially thought to be a coincidence, but then it became clear that the Sioux family was the only ones affected by these events. When Logan first met Mr. Sien, he felt the same energy that was on those cursed objects. So far, there is no way to determine who is behind all of this. The guy's reaction to this story was quite strange. They just laughed. In their opinion, no one in a small town would dare to attack such a reputable family, and especially Emily knows who is behind it all. According to the girl, even Logan will not be able to lift the curse, and the consequences of this conflict will be huge. Is there no way to solve this issue? The guys replied that there was one way, but that the time had not yet come. For some reason, the family Sue constantly spoke in riddles, and the guy every time had to clarify what all these terms meant. Then Emily took a cup in her hand, on which you can see the reflection of some building. Logan had heard of the place, but he didn't know much about it. The Sioux family used to live there, and was the most respected family in the capital. But unfortunately Emily and her grandfather were kicked out, and two years later they had to settle in a small town called Banching. Starting from the bottom, the boys gradually took their present position, but for every strong man there is bound to be a stronger one sooner or later, and so they met their first enemy in this county. But nevertheless, after the hardships they had to endure, the life they have now is a real blessing. Logan didn't even roughly understand what had done such a terrible thing to them but he promised that he would help Mr. Sien get back everything they had lost. His gaze was as determined as ever. One could assume he wanted to simply destroy these abusers. Emily was of the same opinion. One day she would make these people relive the very pain and humiliation she had endured. But it was too early. Logan needed to get back on his feet first and take care of the other family's business. The guy raised his hand up and said three years after that time, the Sioux family would regain its former glory, and the capital would fall at their feet. From this powerful statement, even Emily was shocked. Then the guy was asked again if he could handle all the problems alone. He not only said yes, but vowed that everything would be back to normal within this period of time. This is a good son-in-law. Everyone should have a son like him. Master Sien is probably over the moon. Meanwhile, William had already arrived home and was complaining to his father Charlie. According to him, he hadn't done anything wrong, but this Logan guy had just jumped on him and beaten him up. And rumor had it that this guy had almost taken a man's life. William supposed that maybe in the future the same thing would happen to him. Judging by the father's reaction, it's not the first time his son has been innocent. It begs the question if this guy beats everybody up so badly— then why is William almost unharmed? But still, the father lives by the rule that no one has the right to lay a hand on his son but himself, no matter what he's done. But first of all it is a great opportunity to teach the Sioux family a lesson. For some reason Charlie clearly dislikes her. Plus his son has long wanted to get Emily. If everything goes according to plan, then soon, the boy's dream will come true. Just five minutes later, the brash grandfather was outside the Sioux family home. He burst into the house without a request or invitation, ignoring all the staff's pleas not to do so, and when he entered the hall, he was upset that no one wanted to greet him. The first person he met was Logan, 
Somehow he realized that this was the young man who had beaten his son. William, when he came to this house, made a mess in front of Mr. Sue. What's wrong with being taught a little lesson? Visually, Logan looked very confident, but inside he was a little boy who couldn't believe it was rude to talk to such a high-ranking man. Of course, this manner of speaking was unacceptable to Charlie, so he promised to teach the boy and the whole family a lesson. This old grandfather presented himself as a member of the most powerful family in this town, and his son as an enviable groom. He said it would be a blessing for the Sioux family to be related to someone like them. Those words fueled a growing fire inside Logan. Then Charlie gave one last chance for the guy to get on his knees and admit his mistakes. If his changes are sincere, then the old grandfather will allow his son to marry Emily and stay Logan in town. And if no apology follows, then the entire Sioux family will spend the rest of their lives in wheelchairs. Logan was tired of listening to all this nonsense, and with the help of magic slapped Charlie on the head, the blow was as light as possible. But the grandfather screamed like never before. The main purpose of this magical blow was not physical damage, but something else more interesting. If you always look down on everybody, sooner or later you'll find somebody who can hit back and make you reap the benefits of that piggish attitude. In fact, no one in this town had ever dared to hit Charlie like that before, and usually it never came to that, because people had lost their lives before, so now you could expect anything from him. Logan was overjoyed that this unwanted guest was finally leaving. Mr. Sien was worried about what to do with this malevolent, who has a lot of connections and basically can do anything. After the guy admitted that he used a special spell, for the body it is absolutely harmless but for the mind not quite. After about three days, this specimen will come by itself and beg for mercy. First, it will need to be sent to Chinchin. There is a big market for medicinal drugs in this city. It will be good for Logan to have a supply of materials to improve his strength and save the Sioux family from problems. The same day the guy, along with his bodyguard, came to the bus station to go to the middle city to settle his business. To put it mildly Jack was shocked that his boss in such a status does not have his own transportation, is not a time to buy a car. In response to this the guy said that Jack was thinking about the wrong thing, there is nothing wrong with public transportation it is low carbon and environmentally friendly, you have to take care of nature. In the end they got on the bus, they were squeezed from all sides, and it was terribly hot. Logan was already thinking that there was nothing wrong with thinking about comfort. When they arrived, the guys went outside and couldn't breathe the fresh air. As it turned out, one of the passengers was always blowing gas on the way, driving everyone on the bus crazy. The bodyguard said that he would pay for the car on the way back. Since Logan didn't like this trip either, he decided that he would definitely buy a car in the near future. As suddenly Ruby appeared on the horizon quite by chance, Today she was again in her gorgeous red skirt. It was quite an unexpected meeting. The last company she worked for wasn't very good, so she was fired. The previous boss was a real idiot. He had just recently been transferred to the company and made the team leader. He made the girl's life difficult on a daily basis, not allowing her to fulfill her direct duties. She was fired for this. Logan even wanted to help the girl get rid of the insolent man. Ruby said she didn't have to do anything because she'd already given up on it, and her sister Sophie was starting a new company here and needed an assistant, so here's a new job, but she still had to interview. The boys, of course, out of politeness, asked her again, but Ruby categorically refused to help, and in her turn offered to give the guys a lift by car, wherever they needed. Suddenly the very Sophia appeared on the horizon, it was a gorgeous brunette with lush forms. At first glance she clearly did not like those with whom Ruby socializes, because Logan's appearance left much to be desired. But the girl was not confused and put the guy with the best side, because once he helped her a lot. Then Noah came out of the car, it was Sophie's boyfriend, he said he heard about a guy named Logan, who is now a household name in town, and is the future son-in-law of the Sioux family. Sophie had heard of him too. But why would a guy from the Sioux family take the bus and buy things at the market? It's just incompatible. Since there was no more time to find out who was who, the sister simply said that there were bags in the car so as not to dirty the interior. Put them on and you could sit down. 
It was also forbidden to make any attempt to use Noah on your side. On the way the guys stopped at a restaurant for a snack. Sophie started ordering a lot of food as usual. Logan asked her to stop, because it was unlikely that they would be able to eat even what was already on the table. The girl said not to upset her. After all, she just wants to treat her guests to something worthwhile. She should look at it simpler and eat faster. She really is quite a character. Good thing Ruby isn't like that at all. Since it was a good opportunity, Sophie transferred to her younger sister to go with her to the signing of the contract today, to get acquainted with the peculiarities of the work, as well as with the director Mr. Dillon. Everyone talks about him as a very bad man. For what he did with young girls he should be in jail a long time ago. Yes, unfortunately it is true, but as practice shows in this world we cannot do without such people, because there are too many of them. If you don't learn to fight back now, something will happen one day. By the way, the D family is also involved in this business, and they don't have the best reputation either. It turns out that Logan knows this family and to be on the safe side, the guy suggested that the girls go together to protect them in case of trouble, not him, but Jack. No one dares act inappropriately around a big guy like that. The thing is, you can't let outsiders go directly into the office, but if something goes wrong, the girls will be a distress sign. In just thirty minutes the girls were already in the office. Dylan reread all the documentation, but still wasn't ready to cooperate with a small business yet. Sophie understood all the difficulties, but she would be honored to cooperate with this company on any terms on their part. Dylan suspiciously quickly put the documents aside and turned his attention to Ruby, who was obviously more interested in her than in the business. As it turns out, this director has his own methods of interviewing young girls, he invites them on his knee, and then starts asking various questions, which are not always related to the work process. Sophie immediately realized that things were getting hot and stood up for her sister. She had never heard of a contract being signed on her lap. Dylan did not tolerate such insolence, grabbed the little girl by the hand, and dragged her to him forcibly. His only argument is that running a business is a complicated thing. Why this was said is unclear. Most importantly, the director seems to be paying with this girl. For this they need to talk alone. Sophie tried to keep as calm as possible, and without anyone noticing to call Logan, in principle she succeeded. The guys immediately realized that it was a distress call, so they immediately went to the office. Jack must have been looking forward to the call the most. Initially, the guys made cheerful faces, as if they had come with good intentions, so as not to frighten the victim too much. But certainly the fact that there were two strange men in the room alerted him. The guy walked up to this lover of young women and shook his hand. But he did it so hard that the grown man shrieked like a little child. After such a kind handshake, Dylan agreed to sign the contract and to organize everything in the near future. Since all the issues had already been resolved, the guys quickly packed up, left the office and went on about their business. The principal decided not to waste any time and texted Dee's family that a guy named Logan had just been to his house. Meanwhile, Charlie is at home, and he is literally going crazy from the special spell Logan has cast. The doctors have already examined the patient three times and according to the results, he is fine. Then it hit William, so maybe it was Logan's doing. Charlie itched terribly everywhere, but he couldn't even imagine that this guy had such possibilities. But there couldn't be any other options, if the doctors said he was fine, it must be magic. It was decided to go to the Sioux family at once, before Charlie himself completely disappeared. The gentleman was very much surprised when, indeed, such a tall man of the town came crawling under his door, knelt down, and began to beg for help and mercy. Sien just laughed, and said he couldn't help because he didn't lay that spell. Charlie started calling himself guilty and asking for Logan's number to contact him. At this point, no one is in a position of power to help Charlie carry the burden of his mistakes. The only thing Sien knows is that the guy is now in Ching Ching. In tears, the half-dead man ordered his workers to move in immediately. Charlie also picked up his cell phone and saw Logan's exact location. Dylan kept dropping updates on him. In the meantime, they were trying to keep the guy in the office as long as possible so that Charlie could meet him. 
Logan was seated in the main office, at the director's desk, asked if he was cold or hot, whether to bring food or not, and general treated him like a king. At the snap of a finger food was brought into the office. A large number of bodyguards were involved, who today were in the role of waiters. Then he was taken to the center of the room, flanked by workers with food, and behind him two men who constantly waved fans. To keep the room cool. Dylan was like an errand boy who did absolutely everything he wanted. Logan said to drop the politeness and suggested we all eat together. At last Charlie arrived under the office, for whom Dylan was waiting so much. Now he got out of character and began to insult the guy and threaten him with violence. He did not yet realize what a fatal mistake he was making. Maybe pretty soon he'll be back on his feet again and behave himself. But at the moment he was trying to insult Logan as much as possible, digging a deeper and deeper hole. Charlie came into the office with no mood at all, but with a gift and a sincere apology for everything he'd done. At this moment, he was ready to do anything to save him. This outcome threw Dylan into a quiet horror. He just did not know where to go and what to say. Therefore, just like his boss, he began to beg for mercy. In order to resolve this situation peacefully, we need to immediately restore the contract we just tore up and re-sign it. The guys kindly agreed, in which case they should not worry anymore. It was a small lesson, and Logan sincerely hopes that this will not happen again. Charlie was finally back to normal, his body no longer aching or itching, his joy was unbounded. For this he gave Logan presents, and promised to send the boy some more presents, only more generous ones when he got home. Probably no one had seen Mr. Charlie so sincere and joyful in the last few decades. That's what the right punishment can do to people. Finally, the horror was over, and Logan could breathe easy. Sophie was thrilled, she didn't think the guy could do it. From now on, if Logan needed anything, he could turn to Sophie at any moment. But there was one thing that could not be done, and that was to take her sister as an employee the guy laughed because he had not even thought of such a thing. The guy laughed, because he hadn't even thought of such a thing. Such hyperparenting sometimes hurt Ruby, and she thought that she would never be able to make any big decisions on her own. Now that all the questions were closed, Sophie offered to give the boy a ride to wherever he needed to go. At the moment, Logan was interested in a place where he could buy medicinal materials. The city had the most advanced medical system in the world so anything could be purchased here. In a place that sells drugs, the security system is stricter than at the airport, there are even staff who check documents, there is a huge number of cartoon series of the highest category, in short, you can find anything you want. Noah has always wondered why his beloved forbids him to buy any herbal medicine. The thing is that she doesn't believe in traditional medicine, although it sounds strange. If Noah buys anything there, he may never come home again. In the meantime, the boys had arrived at the place they praised. It was really huge. There must have been at least a couple hundred people here, if not thousands of course. This place could be proudly called the best in the country. Like suddenly the people around them just start freaking out. Noah was among them. They were all admiring a girl named Grace. For a moment, you could assume that Logan was from another board because only there probably hadn't heard of this person yet. In fact, the guy just isn't interested in the entertainment industry, so he doesn't know it. Grace is a very famous singer, who debuted at the age of 18, and gained her popularity at the age of 20. Now she is at her peak of popularity and gathers full halls, tickets are almost impossible to get, and she has not seen any scandals, the reason why she became so popular is her incredible vocals. But there is a point in which she is not so lucky. The fact is that her grandfather is seriously ill, and he does not have long to live, so they come here with a willingness to pay any price for medicinal herbs. Logan will probably come home empty-handed, because this lady is buying up everything she can get her hands on. Since the goods here are very valuable, they are sold by auction, which makes it difficult for the average person to buy. If you don't have a lot of money, you probably won't even be able to touch these goods. At this moment, there is a high-quality snow ginseng harvested in the western region, which has strong medicinal properties. The starting price is $2 million. 
The quality is really good, but so far it's not what Logan needs. The singer has an even bid, which means it's a long way from the finals. And so the host announces the next lot, called the Pro Family Heirloom, one village which doctor, the starting price for this miracle as much as 10 million. The people in the hall were, to put it mildly, shocked by such a starting price. They began to think that they were being held for fools in the hall. No matter how good it was, it would not help a man who had to lose his life. And Logan, in turn, was very interested in this item. He sat and prayed that no one would offer more. The first bet went 10 million. At the same second, Grace raises to 20 million. The situation was getting very heated. It seems that this girl just has endless money. Taking control of himself, Logan raised the number and raised the bet to 30 million. The guy hadn't felt this kind of jitters in a long time. The girl pondered for a moment, then raised her number and declared a simply mind-blowing amount, as much as 50 million, which is probably the largest bet in the history of this institution. Logan apparently got into a gambling full program, because he raised the bet another 30 million, so the price of this herbal drug is 80 million. Grace was already starting to grit her teeth, she probably had no idea it could even go this far. Raising her number, she shrieks the sum of 100 million, is this really the end? Noah was speechless when he heard the figure and couldn't close his mouth, he would never understand the rich, how could he give so much money for a plant? It's time to accept her defeat, this girl is determined, and she will not be stopped by the sum said further, there is only to give in, unfortunately it is so. Suddenly the grandfather of this rich lady, become very bad, apparently he is too nervous from such large sums, which in his position is not allowed. It is counting by minutes, even if you start preparing the medicine now, it will be impossible to make it in time. It is a vicious circle, the medicine is there, but there is no time to prepare it, what to do in such a situation. Since hope is the last to go, the lady gave her card, so that as soon as possible to formalize the transaction and start preparing the medicine, in case everything works out. Logan couldn't sit idly by and ran down to the stage. He grabbed the girl's hand and told her if she didn't want her grandfather to get hurt, she had to stop right now. Of course she didn't believe him and took her hand back. How could she trust a stranger in such a situation? Then some man came up to the guys, apparently it was Grace's acquaintance. After a little chat with Logan, he realized that he could be trusted and began to talk about it to the singer. Just a man who knows nothing about traditional medicine would not appear here. Besides, there was no choice. You gotta trust this guy. In the end, due to hopelessness, the girl had to agree. If Logan managed to save the girl, Grace would do anything for him, in which case he immediately asked to give him this ginseng. Everything should work out in the best possible way. The most important thing is to eradicate all the excitement, start reading spells correctly, and without mistakes. Under normal circumstances it is a long process, but now the situation is a little different and you need to act with maximum speed. Everything should work out the guy is not the first time he saves someone. Now the process of revitalizing the sprout will begin. To do this, you must recite the spell and summon the dragon. I just imagine the green mountains the light that flows in the trees, the sky and the earth gathering it all up and bringing it back to life. Suddenly the golden dragon appears, and he wasn't really happy to be disturbed. Logan quickly put him in his place, and ordered him to gather all his life force. Since the guy would share this dragon, he had no right to refuse him, just need to find an approach, and he would do everything in the best way. Since the guy was very confident, the dragon called him an exact copy of his father in his youth, and promised to even reveal one secret of longevity. Meanwhile, in the real world, people were watching the real miracle. The guy directly began to transfer life force to the grandfather sitting across from him. It was a shock. Someone even began to cry with joy. In front of the eyes of the whole audience, a miracle happened. The man who was about to lose his life now smiles and hugs his granddaughter, and is not going to the other world at all. According to the agreement, whatever's left of the sprout goes to Logan. Grace had no problem agreeing, and offered to have dinner with him as a token of her gratitude. If he were a guy, anyone would have agreed to have dinner with a celebrity. But he didn't know her, 
and he had a lot to do for the evening, so he kindly declined the opportunity. The girl was not upset of course, but promised to thank the guy the next time she saw him. It was really a happy ending to the little story, Grandpa was saved, and Rostock Logan got. By the way almost forgot, Grandpa is not yet fully healthy, so you need to come for medication about once every two months, in advance they cannot be prepared, so be sure to come on time. Of course they will come, but another important question is what is the price of such therapies? Logan smiled and said his price, 20 million for one therapy session. From the look on the girl's face, you could tell that she was a little shocked by such prices, but it's up to you, you don't have to buy it, as they say, it's our business to offer. In general, the guys said goodbye and left towards the exit, it was just a great deal, I got what I needed and found a good buyer. And on the street Jack was already waiting for the guys on a new car, finally Logan was right to buy it and thought about his personal comfort. Now it remains to be seen if this sprout is worth its money. The boys finally returned to their hometown. The first thing they did was to visit Mr. Sien. As it turned out they had some people in the guests, whether it came another candidate who wants to take Emily to his wife. To put it mildly, Logan was getting a little tired of them. In order not to disturb anyone guests immediately began to say goodbye and move towards the exit. By the way they behaved very ugly. Just look at this slanted look, who so generally makes of well-mannered people. To prove his authority, Logan allegedly accidentally kicked the young boy, then caught him and told him to watch his step, because the floor is slippery. In the course of the conversation, the grandfather said that his physical condition is getting better and better, which is encouraging, but don't forget to call if you have any concerns. Also Mr. Sien had something to report, the thing is that he is going to move, Grandpa is very happy that he has lived such a long life, in the place where he is going to go there are some old friends of his, and his last years he would like to live in their company, at the moment the plan is to sell the house and move somewhere on the mountain, where the air is cleaner, and leave his granddaughter here. Is the grandfather finally set on leaving his granddaughter to live with Logan? It's not important yet, because Emily still doesn't want to live in the same room with her boyfriend. For her the option of different floors will be the best. In fact it's quite strange for a loving woman. But maybe in the near future everything will change. As it turned out, the people who were just in the guest came for a reason. The young man immediately realized that the level of Logan is not so bad. And fight with him will be quite difficult. But for his father he did not say so. Also the guys were able to determine that Logan is most likely a sorcerer. Among the warriors is a belief according to which it is forbidden to contact blacksmiths. Plus sorcerers are cunning and unpredictable. If you get under his spell, then nothing will help. If he was really that hard to defeat, maybe it would be better to cancel the contract at once and not put anyone in danger. Despite all the beliefs and so on, the boy considered himself a real warrior, and some sorcerer was no problem for him. In that case, the men decided to do it when Mr. Sien left the city. Everyone who knew the old man at least a little bit came out to see him off. It's a pretty big loss. The kind of man with a capital letter. The pain of never coming back to the city. But if he made that decision, then no one has the right to condemn him for it. Everyone except the guy was crying a lot. I'll definitely have to go and visit my grandfather sometime. As soon as the car drove into the distance, a little more than a kilometer, People instantly lost tears from their eyes and they frankly began to latch on to Emily and think about how to steal a part of their territory. Just like that, no one can be trusted in this life. The guy stood up for her and told everyone that there were still owners on this territory, and if anyone dared to behave badly, he would be punished immediately. From now on, people will have a very negative attitude towards Logan, because he showed them where they belong, and nobody likes that. Emily's nerves are starting to get the best of her. Anyway, if the guys don't get tougher, this rotten society will eat them up. We need to do something about it. Most likely even with relatives and friends will start similar things. In nature animals fight with their fellows. The guys are very tired. It is necessary to go home to rest and think about everything. Meanwhile, Yang and his wife were at home. The girl read the hot news that the Sioux family is leaving the city. But it's not quite true. Only Mr. Sien is leaving the city. 
They were extremely happy about this event, because very soon they would be able to return to their dirty business, which had to be suspended due to the recent events. First of all, it meant that Logan was left without support, so the first thing to do was to deal with him. Suddenly a crowd of unknown people entered the house. The girl demands them to stop but all to no avail. At first glance they were like ghosts and emitted a red glow. For the most part these people came with good intentions. The first thing they said was that to get rid of someone forever you must consume their mind, flesh, and blood. The boys were very frightened. They fell to the floor and began to beg the spirits not to do anything bad, as well as to get away from them this centipede, which was slowly but surely coming towards the members of the Lin family. Prayers for mercy had no effect on them. The spirits simply carried out the task at hand, saying that it was worth making small sacrifices to achieve the goal. Just then, Logan brought his favorite woman back to the house. Jack ran out of the house in a cold sweat. Apparently he had been waiting for his master for a long time. The thing is, a man in white came to the house. The guard said there was no one there, but he broke in anyway, despite all the prohibitions. The guy thanked Jack for his work and asked him to wait outside until the man left, and he agreed without question. It turned out that Logan had an appointment with Richard, the guy who had recently come to visit. The guys had agreed to compete with each other, and the guy just forgot about it, the guest must be pissed. Because of her already suspended emotional state Emily was very frightened, she thought that something serious had happened. To avoid any conflict, the girl made sure to ask to apologize to him for being late. The first thing Logan apologized for the long wait, and Richard apologized for breaking in without permission, it was not nice of him. In the end, Emily went upstairs to do her own thing, and the boys could call themselves even from now on. As Richard was suddenly thirsty and asked for a glass of water, Logan kindly invited him into the kitchen and offered him juice, water, or maybe even tea. As it turned out, it was just a diversion. The guest took advantage of his host's kindness, thus giving him an opportunity to attack from behind and decided to take advantage of it immediately. As Logan is not an easy man, he saw the danger, and at the right moment, he simply bent over. You could say he was already beginning to taunt his opponent. By the way, there was beer in the fridge. None of the Sue's family drink it. Jack probably bought it. There was a lot of stuff here so Richard was free to choose what he wanted to drink. Since Logan had gotten lucky this time, he needed to find another good opportunity to attack from the back. To get it, Richard asked for tea to be made. While the boy was putting the brew in the kettle for his favorite guest, he slowly crept closer and closer to strike the first and last blow to one of the weakest human places. As Logan was always a few steps ahead, he dodged the words ostensibly by accident under the pretext that the kettle was boiling. As a result, Richard hit the wall with his hand and fell to the floor. The guy laughed at him, because it was nice when such guests got what they deserved, and then asked him not to lie on the floor and to be a little more careful. Richard began to suspect that it couldn't be another coincidence, he must have done it on purpose. But how such a young lad could have such strength to deliberately avoid such attacks is impossible. The bandit convinced himself that it was only two coincidences, took a sharp knife in his hands, and tried to destroy the boy a third time. As a result, he hit his head on the wooden table and hit it hard, and Logan was pretending that he was just thinking about his own problems, like watering the flowers in the garden so they wouldn't wilt. As a result, this professional fighter already had a bruise on his arm and a headache, and the fight hadn't even started yet. What's wrong with him today? Maybe he hit his head at home this morning. Richard was really puzzled. Logan had been lucky once, but three times was no coincidence. By the way, the tea was already ready. It replenishes energy and even cures diseases. If it wasn't a coincidence, then how good was his reaction really? that he was able to dodge even with his back to his opponent, maybe he wasn't human at all. Richard decided not to try his luck again today. He thought of something to do and said that he had to leave urgently. It's the only good decision he's made today. But not everything is so simple. Logan gave Richard three chances to destroy him. Of course, now you can't leave so easily. You have to be responsible for your actions. 
Richard called himself a martial artist, which means he's definitely not going to lose in a battle. This is another loud statement, which Logan will easily refute. Also, this fighter has heard that a sorcerer needs at least five minutes to create a spell, and during this time you can destroy anyone. Of course, this information is true, but who said that Logan is actually a sorcerer? To prove that magic isn't the guy's only skill, he threw a punch that anyone can block, and then used even more force to throw his opponent in the opposite direction. Richard was given four attempts to destroy the guy, but all to no avail, he's really nothing. The only thing Richard could do now was beg for mercy, he was at a disadvantage. During the conversation, he admitted that he had signed a contract that obligated him to destroy Logan, so he was acting within the confines of the agreement. For his honesty, the guy saved his life, but asked him to tell the one who gave him the assignment that if such incidents happen again at least once, the answer will not be long in coming. The fighter immediately agreed, and said he would pass those words on right away. Then Emily started to come down to the first floor. She was shocked to say the least when she saw such a huge crack in the middle of the house. The guy assured her that everything was fine, and he and the guest had sorted everything out. This guest was strange, and it was better not to invite him here anymore. The old grandfather, who ordered the destruction of Logan received a call on his cell phone. It was Richard. He was in a hurry to rejoice that the mission failed. He also strongly recommended not to contact Logan, because it does not bring anything good. Of course the man was angry, because he had invested a lot of money in Richard, and in the end it didn't work out. Logan also said that he was giving him one last chance to stop doing this kind of business, there would be no other. The man throws the phone away in anger. It's so annoying when some young boy interferes with the business of grown-up uncles. It's really hard to believe that such a qualified specialist as Richard couldn't do his job properly. Then the same spirits who had recently visited the Lynn family came to the house of the aggrieved businessman. This time they also offered to gain power, but the peculiarity of their service is that it is impossible to refuse. At the same time, the chief guard of the territory, Jamie, was reprimanding all his wards because for the last month they had been working, not working, how could Mr. Logan be satisfied with that? He would rather fire everyone and hire new workers, more responsible. Then he received a phone call from Yang. He said that he had some quality ginseng in stock and wanted to give it to him. It was just wonderful news. Jace would definitely come and get that sprout. Also under the influence of the intruders, Ian insisted that the real buyer be present at the meeting, because his supplier was too picky. James has no problem agreeing because it's ginseng, which is what the boss needs. This meeting is going to be the ultimate trap for Logan. The men in red coats are really serious. They come to everyone who hates Logan to force them to cooperate with them. After the conversation, Ian started begging for mercy, and begging to be let go, even offering his wife and sister-in-law in return. That's what men are like, they'd give anything to save their ass. The invaders were not satisfied with such a proposal. In their opinion, the two women were trash and nothing more. To save themselves, it would be enough to obey all instructions and not to contradict them in any way. Meanwhile, Logan and his guard had almost arrived at the rendezvous point. Looking around, the guy realized that something was wrong here. It was too confined with only one exit and entrance. The rooms were empty, and there was not a soul around. It must be a trap. Suddenly, out of nowhere, at the other end, a man appears with two small, identical girls and claps his hands. Jace immediately stood up for his master, asked him to do nothing foolish, and said just give him the ginseng. If you examine this man carefully, you can say with certainty that he has no goods, and what's more, he looks like a maniac who hunts people. In order not to waste a lot of time on idle talk, he immediately launched these two beautiful flyers into the attack to do their job. In this case, Logan needs to take the initiative, because James is unfortunately powerless here. Logan grabs the little ones by the arms, lifts them up, and then with all his might, slams them either to the ground. Logan thought that was the end of the tricks, but no, this sick-in-the-head grandfather still had something else to do. Using the smoke technique, in this cloud his body becomes invisible, certainly a good trick, 
but it doesn't help as long as Logan can see with his heart. It allows you to detect any movement of your opponent, even in his personal smoke. In the end, the guy just pulled the guy out of there and gave him a fist in the face that sent him flying to the other end of the room and hitting the wall hard. To put it mildly, the guy was just shocked when he realized how easily he had been uncoiled. Initially, he built himself a god, and lost his life as the most ordinary man, maybe a little more with him had to deal with, and that's only because of the girls. Suddenly, from the next room, the guys heard some strange sounds, as if someone was screaming and asking for help. Behind the door was Logan's ex-wife, but how she got here. When they removed the tape from her mouth, the girl started begging for rescue, and said that she would do anything for it, would fulfill any orders for the rest of her life, just save her, she was terribly scared, and it is not known how long she stayed here. In this case, the guy certainly could not refuse this shapely lady who had humiliated him before, and immediately released her. Grabbing the girl by the buttocks James put her on his shoulder and the guys went to the exit. She was crying hard from fear. There was a lot of hysteria that the girl couldn't stop, despite who she was in life. Still even she felt a little sorry for herself in this situation. The road ahead was long, through a dense forest, as suddenly on the way the guys met some lonely man. Why he was sitting here is not known. Logan went to investigate. As it turned out, it was one of Emily's bodyguards and he was also badly wounded. Not holding back tears, the man said that Emily had been kidnapped. He could not protect her. At the moment the girl is in the basement, with a man who looks very much like Jack and has a cold weapon. Such inactivity on Emily's part makes the bandit bored. He wants to have some fun. Putting a knife to the girl's throat the man promised that if she agreed to cooperate with him, he would not do her any harm. She did not have much time to think. In response, the girl said that the bandit in principle does not have enough courage to harm her. Such insolence of course no one will not tolerate, so he slapped her hard. He decides to do everything without any problems. He is not afraid of the girl's origin. He is not even afraid of losing his life. And if everything goes well, the man will get a lot of money, then he will buy tickets to somewhere and leave, then no one will find him. Emily was given the last five minutes to think and then the bandit does not vouch for himself. The woman has long since realized that no one is going to destroy her, because Grandpa is still alive, the target of these bandits is not her, but probably someone else. The main thing is that Logan did not act impulsively, because he can make fatal mistakes. Logan at this moment, along with his guard, are moving towards the house, there was an unbelievable commotion. All the bodyguards couldn't find a place and cried because they couldn't protect Emily, and she was kidnapped. They were ready for absolutely any punishment for this, even losing their lives. Logan ordered them to find her immediately, and we'll talk about punishment later. The guys called the police, but they haven't heard back yet, so the van's probably gone missing. How could this be allowed to happen? Where's Jack? The guys report he's badly injured. He's in the hospital right now. If a guy this serious is so badly injured, it must be the work of an unusual person. Logan's orders are to send half the staff out to search the area, and leave half here to guard the house. James had a separate assignment, to guard his ex-wife. With Emily in more danger by the minute, something has to be done. Logan refuses to believe that she can't be found quickly. In a forbidden book on magic, there is a forbidden technique based on blood magic that can be used to track a person. The practice is harmful to the practitioner, namely it consumes a lot of energy, sometimes it can even be life-threatening. But now is not the time to think about the consequences. For Emily's sake, the guy is ready for absolutely anything. He was able to see the place where his beloved was, though in black and white colors. After viewing, the guy even vomited blood, how heavy this spell! It took only a few seconds, and already caused enormous damage to the body. It was urgent to go to Baoyuan Mountain, the girl was there. Just as the five minutes that had been allotted for thinking were over, the bandit entered the room again. In order to buy some more time, the girl agreed to cooperate. The bandit was madly happy about this news, and already started to unbutton his fly. But luckily, he didn't even have time to take off his pants. 
Logan was there, full of anger and hatred for the man who had stolen the love of his life. Without much conversation, he began beating the bandit as hard as he could with his legs and arms, on his stomach, on his neck, on his face, and he did it in the most subtle ways, so as to maximize the effect of each blow. And at the end, he threw it against the concrete so hard that it cracked underneath him. When the enemy was no longer able to resist, Logan grabbed you by the hair and asked who sent him. As it turned out it was Mr. D again. The guy had forgiven him twice already and wanted to part peacefully. But apparently it won't work that way. He's eager to fight. The man only took the case for the money. Also this weak-minded man in his position thought to lie and say he didn't hurt Miss Emily. But the abrasions on her face won't hide anything. She couldn't have fallen. It's certain someone with their dirty hands did, dared to hit a woman. Since there was nothing to say for himself, Logan grabbed him by the neck, lifted him up with one hand, and slowly began to clench his fist tighter and tighter. The mercenary begged for mercy, but it was too late. He who beats innocent women should not live in peace in this world. Finally his fist clenched completely, and the man became disabled for life. Despite the fact that this mercenary bullied Emily, she didn't want the guy to take his life. So he just broke his spine and now he will spend his whole life in bed. There were too many bad things done to him so this is the minimum price for his actions. And he was especially responsible for the pain he caused the girl. Logan blamed himself for not being able to protect his princess. When all this horror was over, the guy could not hold back his tears. Because everything could have ended much worse. But this time he was lucky. He promised that such a thing will never happen again. In order not to stay in this horrible place for long, the guys decided to go home. The second part of this story ended with Logan finding his girlfriend in the deep woods, and heroically fighting the mercenary who kidnapped her, eventually the guy managed to defeat him. To sweetly avenge it was decided not to take his life, but to make it so that he could never walk again. Then Charlie ran to his beloved, took off all the ropes, hugged her, and began to cry. The guy had not been so much worried lately, because he really realized that he could lose the person he was ready to marry even tomorrow. Charlie would do everything he could to make sure that it would never happen again. In the house, despite his serious injury, Jack couldn't calm down and was about to go to rescue Charlie and his girlfriend. Of course, in such a state it is strictly forbidden to do so, because at the moment Jack is a very easy target, and he can't help him in the fight. He has very prudent colleagues, who simply did not let him make this thoughtless step into the abyss. As suddenly, an ambulance appears on the horizon, from which Emily and Charlie got out. Except for a couple of abrasions, the girl's health is fine. Every morning she needs to apply a certain ointment, and pretty soon everything will be completely gone. As soon as the opportunity arose, Jack immediately ran and kneeled before his master. He blamed himself for not being able to protect Emily, so with a clear heart he let him be beaten and chased away, in return he will say absolutely nothing, because in his opinion he really deserved it. Charlie urged the bodyguard not to blame himself, because he did his best, and that's the most important thing in his job. Only the guy was very interested in how the bandit managed to beat Jack, after all, he himself is a master of martial arts. At that moment Emily broke into the conversation, she said that there were two kidnappers. One of them was wearing a black robe with a hood on his head, so she didn't remember exactly what he looked like. Jack added that the bandit had a centipede on his wrist, which bit him, after which he was paralyzed and couldn't fight anymore. If it wasn't for her, they wouldn't have had a chance of success. So far, from this brief description, Charlie assumed it was the Xianming clan wondering what motive they had for such a drastic act. After a moment's thought, he notified his guards that he had to leave on an urgent business trip. Of course Jack would like to go with him, but he can't do that yet, because someone has to be responsible for guarding the villa, and report immediately if anyone comes. Charlie is determined to find out more about the situation, and as soon as he finds out something, he'll tell him. Right before the guy was about to get into the car, Emily came to him and told him that there was definitely someone in the bushes, he was skeptical, but he decided to check it out, and since the time was very dangerous, 
he decided to take James as his assistant, so that in case of emergency the guys could cover each other. Emily was right, and when the boys went to check the bushes, they found William there. Well, it's been a long time. The guys didn't hesitate to trim his hair, tie him up, and make him tell the truth immediately. Since the guy was captured and now his life is in someone else's hands, it didn't take him long to start telling everything he knows. It all started last Wednesday or so. Since the mercenary had failed to take Charlie's life, William's father was very angry and contacted some bad people. These guys looked very creepy. During the conversation they cast a spell on his father and buried him. And now they're threatening William. Their main condition is Charlie's body. In case this crying boy brings it to them, then they will give him life, but there are absolutely no guarantees. William came here only because he was forced to, and asked for help. In fact, he has long wanted to stop crossing paths with Charlie completely, because he realized that he cannot pull. Of course, the guys listened to the information, but hardly anyone was going to help him. James suggested to leave everything as it was, because they didn't need William anymore. Charlie was of a different opinion. He wanted to get answers to his questions, at least to find out why the enemies needed it, and why they wouldn't do it themselves if they were so powerful. When suddenly something flew between the boys at high speed, probably the same creepy guys William was talking about. Charlie immediately ordered James to stay here and take care of the prisoner, and if anything happened, to let him know immediately so that he could be kept informed of the latest developments. By the way, as it turned out, William wasn't completely clean either. Right now you can see a magic spider coming out of his mouth. This is actually too bad, because the enemies could completely hear their conversation. Meanwhile, Charlie is already moving at full speed in the approximate direction where the enemy could fly away. So far the guy doesn't even realize if he will be able to follow the trail, because it's like looking for a needle in a lot of snow. At one point he did manage to get a glimpse of his target, for he was a master of his craft, and even more so when it came to his family. Charlie did not lose the opportunity to attack. By the way, the enemy with the girl on his shoulder was running away in an unknown direction. He could not even think that someone was running after him. This naive joy lasted exactly until the man noticed Charlie, who was approaching rather swiftly. The smile on his face disappeared abruptly. Now they were expressing completely different emotions, and they clearly had nothing to do with positive ones. On the background of a strong panic, the opponent began to make every effort to run as fast as possible, but as you can already guess this speed was clearly not enough, because in this respect Charlie surpassed him several times. A huge yellow hand practically caught up with the opponent. But unfortunately not everything is so simple, to somehow protect himself and to prolong his existence on this planet, the man also began to use magic. He used a skill that in theory allows the almighty forces to take over his body completely, in simpler words teleport. The man even managed to relax a little. For some reason he was 100% sure that it would definitely save his life. Charlie in turn basically expected that the opponent would use some tricks, so he prepared in advance. He took out another dragon ticket and used the skill of the nine thunderclaps of the sacred celestials, which allowed a completely random lightning strike directly at the enemy target. Since the rival was no longer functioning, he could no longer hold the guy's ex-wife on his shoulders, so she began to fall downwards without a creature. Charlie, of course, did not hesitate, and caught her at the very last moment, even though he could not have done so, for all the pain and humiliation the girl had brought into his life. Well, since the task was accomplished, the guy decided to go home immediately, because frankly he was a bit tired. As practice shows, even with his level to fight for a whole night is very problematic. Such an activity requires a lot of energy and internal magical power. It turns out there is still room to strive and this is not the limit. When Charlie reached his house, he asked someone to pick up the girl, for he had no strength to carry her but for some reason there was absolute silence in response. No one would even say a word. To put it mildly, it looked rather strange, and it was bad timing. If something really happened there, it would be very difficult for the guy to defend himself. Right in the middle of the street, 
bodyguard Jack and the rest of the guards were lying on the floor. It was like someone had just beaten them up really badly, and they were doing it without any regret, because at first glance the guys didn't even show any signs of life. Then Charlie remembered his beloved. He just couldn't afford to let anything happen to her a second time. To see that everything was normal, the guy just jumped out of his seat and ran into the house. Of course, he enters the house without knocking and immediately starts shouting her name because he was sure that she was not alone in the house. But it turned out all much calmer than one could imagine. The girl just lay alone on the bed and already saw the tenth dream and the guy simply woke her up. At least she was glad that her husband-to-be had come home, but she didn't understand why he was being so loud. When Charlie realized that everything was plus or minus calm, he threw his ex-wife on the floor and walked over to Emily. The first thing he did was to hug her tightly, and show her how much he cared for her, and then he told her that for some reason all the guards were lying on the floor at the entrance to the house. Emily immediately realized that her future husband was pretty tired and urgently needed a good rest. She hugged him even tighter in response, and then gently put him to bed. The next morning Charlie woke up alone, and immediately smelled a very pleasant aroma. Emily had been in the kitchen since morning, preparing a delicious breakfast for her lover, so that when he woke up he would have a good meal and energy for the day. She was surprised that he woke up so early, because he usually slept much longer, especially after he was tired. He couldn't sleep well, because he had so many thoughts that kept him awake so early. Since this breakfast was to be served as a surprise, the girl sincerely didn't want Charlie to see what she was cooking, but since he's a very curious guy, he decided to see what was in the pots without further ado. As it turned out, it was noodles, but Emily's lack of cooking experience made it look more like porridge. The girl already realized that it wasn't a good idea to feed her young man like that so she was going to throw everything away. But since the best man in the world was in a relationship with her, she didn't have to throw anything away. Charlie silently took the plate in his hands, put the food in it, and said that it suited him perfectly, and he was happy to have breakfast. While eating, Emily realized that the noodles were too sweet, she must have mixed up salt and sugar again, and frankly she couldn't understand how Charlie hadn't said anything yet and kept eating. Afterwards the girl said out loud that it looked really awful and she didn't have to eat it at all. Even so, the boy smiled and continued eating. Suddenly, the TV news began to report that there was a fire in the house of a famous businessman, which resulted in the deaths of two people, and the whereabouts of the gentleman himself and his son are unknown. In addition, the businessman Yang was found dead in his home that same night, and the police have opened a criminal investigation into the matter. According to reliable reports, the two gentlemen were very close, which may have something to do with the tragedy. Initially Emily thought it was her boyfriend's doing, but he replied clearly that he had nothing to do with it at all. Then I wondered who could have done it, and for what purpose. To be honest, Charlie had no idea who did it. But one thing he knew for sure, the purpose of these two was the same, it was revenge for the guy. That's why they kidnapped Emily and beat up Jack, most likely it was just the beginning, and definitely should expect a second attempt. Even if Yam was really killed for not following the orders of the master, then where the other businessman disappeared, there must be someone behind this case, and we must find out at any cost what is the purpose of the person who started it all, and conspired such serious people. But if Emily is also the target of these people, then why didn't they do anything to her the night they killed all the guards? The girl then assumed that these people were trying to get to her grandfather, but Charlie was quick to disprove that theory, because in fact, at this point, the grandfather is the easiest target, and capturing him is not a problem. When the guy's ex-wife suddenly spoke up, the guys thought she had left a long time ago, but as it turned out she hadn't. Because the moment they were taken hostage, just when the old man saw his sister, things started to get out of hand. For some reason, he called her body a real treasure though in fact she was just an ordinary girl, with not the most decent habits, and her hobby was spending other people's money. Jan and his father made a deal with this demon, but the naked eye could see that this deal was just empty words, because the grandfather in case he did not like something, 
could easily attack, using his centipede. At least he didn't like the fact that they wanted to rush him, because only someone who doesn't realize the importance of the case would rush in this situation. After the father was already unconscious, Grandpa switched to his son and suggested that he return to the original plan, namely to pick up the phone, call Charlie, and arrange a meeting. After the man made the call, Grandfather couldn't help himself, and just like the father, he destroyed the son. According to the original plan, after successfully completing the task, this man was supposed to leave the city, but since things didn't go exactly according to plan, it led to the current situation. I wonder why the news reported that only the father was killed and the son survived. In general, the situation is getting more and more confusing. We can only speculate what may be next. To be honest, the ex-wife Anna doesn't even know what to do, because she has nothing left. Her husband lost his life, her sister was kidnapped, and Anna in turn hurt the only person who could help her. She does not expect Charlie to help her save her sister, but at least hope that she will help her to build a memorial for her entire family, which was destroyed just recently. In spite of everything Charlie said that he would try to help, but his ex-wife's sister will not be his main goal. At least he has someone to risk his life for. In the process of saving those whom the guy planned himself, he will try to save his sister. After these words Anna started crying even harder. She just could not hold back her emotions and was insanely grateful, even for the fact that the guy will just try. When suddenly some unknown man bursts into the house, instead of at least saying hello, he expressed his dissatisfaction with the architecture of the house, because such a simple renovation... This is not the level of the Sioux family. Charlie, of course, was very angry at the unwanted guest and wondered who was standing in front of him. It turned out to be Emily's own brother, and it was normal for him to come into a stranger's house, express his displeasure, and say that even if he had no money at all, he would never live in a doghouse like this. Charlie was surprised, to say the least, because he'd never heard of this brother before. But it's not surprising because the girl broke off contact with him as soon as she left the capital, and basically never contacted him again. By the way, his name is Tony. Now the girl is at least very curious as to why he's here and what the purpose of his visit is. In general, from an old friend for Tony received information that the grandfather took something very important for their family. Now the guy is very interested to know where this thing is. After all, he strongly wants to take it back. In response to this Emily said that she knows nothing about it, and in general, the brother should leave, because at least he is not welcome here. This response was not surprising, because it is unlikely that the sister has ever had access to such valuable things. To put it mildly for the girl it all begins to annoy, to somehow remedy the situation, she began to threaten that she will call the police, and write a statement for trespassing on private property. As much as her brother was not the most ordinary person, it's hard to scare him like that. After all, probably not a single policeman of this city will not dare to put handcuffs on Tony, because then he will only be worse. A large number of connections and good authority a great force, which is often above all laws, of course. All this is wrong and should not be so, but unfortunately the world is so arranged, and in another way is unlikely to ever be. And if he doesn't, he can't take care of himself, and could do something very bad, so it's best not to test his nerve, but to do as he asks. And when it came to touching him, Charlie stepped in and showed this upstart that he'd already overstepped his authority. To put it mildly, Tony was shocked, because no one on this planet would allow himself to be treated like that, let alone forbidden. Of course, he was very curious about the mystery man. Charlie introduced himself at once, but so far it doesn't say much, because Tony had never heard anything about him before. To get to know each other better, his brother decided to attack Charlie, so that he could fully understand who was standing in front of him. But the point of such an encounter was that if a man had no powers, he would most likely not be able to get up. Of course, like a true professional, the guy responded with magic and repelled the attack. To be honest, Tony couldn't believe his eyes, he couldn't even imagine that such a master could be found in such a small town, because even in big cities they could be counted on a few fingers. 
Charlie realized that his potential rival's skills were quite strong, and his chance of winning was barely over 50%. He doesn't really care what happens to him after the fight, but he's worried about Emily, because the house is pretty crowded and she could really get hurt. So Tony went on the attack. He managed to deflect the first punch without any problems, but he couldn't hit back. In addition to having incredible skills in terms of fighting, he also has a very fast movement speed. Charlie didn't even have time to notice that his opponent went behind his back. Only thanks to his instincts, he realized that he was about to miss a blow in the back. Then the guys started a tight hand-to-hand -hand fight, in which, surprisingly, Tony felt more than well. And in the end, with one deft move, he was able to overpower Charlie, causing him to fall face first to the floor. Of course the girls ran to his aid, but he urged them to stay back, because he wasn't going to end it there. No matter how hard it was, Charlie would never let someone just barge into his house, threaten his girlfriend, and start a fight. Even though Emily knows how strong her boyfriend is, every time she worries about him like the first time, but this time it's not just her. For the first time in her life, his ex-wife also worries about him a lot, the girl even fell to her knees because her blood pressure skyrocketed. When Charlie was finally able to get up, he told the guy to get back down. Even though the fight was over rather quickly, Tony was delighted and reported with confidence that Charlie's skills were more than enough for this small town. But as it turned out, Emily's brother had met a lot of people of that caliber, and Charlie was no exception. But anyway, since Charlie is in Emily's relationship, all her problems and worries are automatically transferred to him, and if the girl does not want to fulfill them, no one can make her. In fact, only a real man can say those words, and unfortunately, they're in the minority in the world. Then walking back and forth across the room, Tony told me that he hated people who didn't see their true potential, but continued to live as they were and were happy with everything. After a lengthy expression of his displeasure, the brother offered to make a deal. This is certainly a very interesting point. God only knows what he really needs. In general, people like him are not initially trustworthy. According to Tony's personal observations, Charlie's perfection does not exceed the stage of foundation formation. Of course, the guy did not reveal all the cards and said that such personal matters did not concern him in any way. In the end his brother said that he would give Charlie two whole years, and if during this time the guy didn't achieve better results, Tony would just come and take his sister away, and then turn Charlie to dust right in front of everyone, without any regret. To be honest, the guy doubted it very much, because in fact his potential is limitless, and depending on the situation he can become much stronger than it seems at first glance. But for the sake of propriety, he decided to ask what would happen if he got lucky, and over the course of two years, he could actually get a lot stronger. In that case, the guy will get a chance to fight Tony in the most luxurious arena in the capital, and whether he wins or loses, his name will be known, and at least it will help to build a good career. The terms of the bet were really favorable, and Charlie was happy to agree to them, but on the other hand he had no choice. In that case Tony wouldn't stay long, but he said again that he wanted the thing he'd come for, and the next time Tony came, he'd have to have it. Also this upstart has not lost the opportunity to remind Charlie that his current strength will not be enough to fight him. That's why he should start to spend much more time on training. Only then there will be a result. Well about this he can certainly not doubt. The guy is very responsible and will make every effort to make himself at least several times in these two years. Finally the man went to the exit, put on his hat, and politely said goodbye, then got into his fancy car and went about his business. At that moment Charlie had a lot on his mind, at least he was trying to figure out who he had just spoken to. This man must be a big shot in the capital, and if you consider Charlie's connections and resources, he's not even fit to be a janitor. Then Emily came up to the guy and told him that Grandpa had actually told her something before he left. Namely, that if the guys in the future encountered a situation they could handle, they should definitely contact the man from the provincial security office. In the past, this man was Mr. Sun's apprentice, so he's bound to help. It was a really good idea, but Charlie wondered why Emily had a look on her face like it wasn't such a good idea. 
there's an explanation for that too. The thing is that in modern society a man rarely manages to rise to the top on his own, because of this he always has to depend on someone. Once this guy was supported by his grandfather, and Tony, but now that everyone knows that Charlie is in a quarrel with Tony, it will be quite problematic to ask him for help. But even so the guy did not lose enthusiasm, in principle he was ready to do his studies on his own. Then the guys heard someone knocking on the front door. First they thought it was Emily's brother coming back, but as it turned out later it wasn't. Now they've got people from the security department coming in to tell them that Mr. Fan would like to invite them to a banquet he's personally hosting. It's not the kind of thing you just invite anyone to, so Charlie decided to inquire at once. Unfortunately these guys are only responsible for sending the message, so they urge not to refuse the invitation. In this case, the guys asked for literally five minutes of time to at least minimally prepare, change clothes and go down to the exit. When the guys have already arrived at the party, they immediately realize that the owner is doing very well. At least Emily managed to notice a lot of famous people, and that says only one thing, the man is really successful. The higher the status of a person the more work you have to do to keep, so organizing such events is a pretty good solution. Amelia also informed her young man that there were quite a few pairs of eyes watching him now. So even if Charlie Mr. Fan did not like it, he could not do anything, so it is necessary to completely relax and enjoy this beautiful evening. Suddenly, someone called out to the girl. It was one of the youngest guests of the evening, the one and only daughter of Mr. Fan, named Julia. For some reason, she was overjoyed to see Emily, and immediately rushed to hug her. The little girl had the feeling that they hadn't seen each other for ages. Looking at the expression on Emily's face you might think that she does not like children, but in fact it is not so, the girl just did not recognize Julia, and decided not to play a play, and just asked who approached her. That's when Baby told her who she really was, and she made it sound like it was a shame not to know. Then Julia turned her attention to Charlie, as it turned out she had heard quite a lot about him and sincerely wanted to know what is really so special about this guy. It is important for her to know, because Emily must marry a real man, and if Charlie is not such a man, then the little girl will do everything to prevent this marriage from taking place. Julia got so into character that she started talking in front of everyone in the center of the room about how beautiful, tender, and proud Emily was. She then informed her boyfriend that Julia was a child and should not be taken seriously, at the very least, because she might interfere with the marriage. In the end, the little girl, albeit reluctantly, agreed to let them be together, because she realized that Emily really cared about this man. But if she finds out that Charlie hurt her, he'll be waiting for the worst days of his life. Absolutely all nightmare dreams will be realized. Then the little girl remembered she had something she wanted to tell Emily. It's about a friend of the girl's father's that she remembers very well. Just recently Julia heard information that he was going to take revenge for a man with whom Charlie had problems. For some reason, it washed out only a smile on her face. Probably she just did not take this information seriously. And in general, it is difficult to trust small children in such serious matters. The funny thing about this situation is that Grandpa once said that the only person you can count on is Mr. Fan. It's outrageous that apparently he's not really in Charlie's good graces. Suddenly, Mr. Fan himself enters the banquet hall, with a lot of security, just like a high-ranking man should. He himself is the director of the Provincial Security Department, also graduated from the Military Academy and set the record of physical fitness indicators, which no one has been able to beat so far. Behind comes a guy named Oscar this is the eternal shadow of Mr. Fan, Julia even from afar noticed that he is clearly happy with something day. Then the little girl asked why Charlie didn't say hello to her father. He had a logical answer to that question. Why would he do that if they didn't even know each other? The guy didn't have to flatter him just because of his status. Meanwhile, Oscar ordered his men to bring Charlie here to say hello to the commander. Mr. Fan stopped him and asked Oscar to bring Charlie here personally. He knew very well that they were not on the best of terms, but nevertheless the commander ordered him to do it quickly and politely. Of course all the guests were watching the meeting, and at the same time they were discussing what they thought about it. 
Instead of just asking, Oscar decided to ask the same question Julia had just asked. In principle, his answer didn't change in any way why he had to do that. This answer just instantly pissed the guy off, and he started calling Charlie a jerk in front of everyone, and telling him something about manners, though he was probably hearing about them for the first time. At the same moment, Emily stood up for her young man. After all, to call a person a jerk in public, it has absolutely nothing to do with manners. And in general, how can Oscar allow himself to behave like this, provided that Mr. Fan personally invited Charlie to the event? Of course Oscar apologized for his act, after which Emily asked him once again to normally address her young man as a real guest. Deep down the guy just tore apart, at the moment, he can barely cope with the anger that he has inside. As it turns out, this officer's main goal is to get rich and do his best to destroy Emily in the future. After Oscar had concentrated as much as possible, he found the strength to politely address Charlie, namely to tell him that Mr. Fan had asked him to come over. To Oscar, the guy looked like a peacock who was always trying to make himself look good. He also thinks that Charlie is taking advantage of the fact that he is under the protection of the Sioux family and no one will touch him. But it won't be like that forever, because time is constantly changing and no one can say for sure what will happen tomorrow. In the meantime, Charlie finally reached Mr. Fan, thanked him for the invitation, and asked him why he was invited. The gentleman laughed and said that there was no reason as such, he just wanted to meet such a promising young man. Charlie had really become quite successful lately, and so much so that this information had reached Mr. Fan personally. The moment when Charlie caught the guy who caused real problems for the whole department is considered the most vivid. Then Mr. Fan took his interlocutor by the hand and said that he would like to invite him to become an instructor in his department. When suddenly Oscar bursts in in the middle of the conversation, he's furious, to put it mildly, that some savage who came out of nowhere has been entrusted with such a position, and whether he has the qualifications to succeed in this position. Unfortunately, it was easier for Charlie to turn down the job, but it was definitely not for lack of qualifications. Oscar urged him to transplant the bullshit, and informed the entire room if Charlie could overpower him, then the officer would truly recognize his candidacy. In which case the guy took a counter-question, Given Oscar's position, he completely randomly, I think, in jail for assaulting an off duty officer. Oscar answered immediately that in five days, when they will go to the ring, he will sign a waiver of all claims, and in case Charlie wins, he will be allowed to take the position without any problems. The guy told him for the second time that he wasn't interested in working in security already, so he offered to pick another bet. Well, then Oscar offered another option. In case he lost in a fair one-on-one -on -one fight, he would publicly apologize to Charlie and treat him like an older brother. In principle, the guy was more than satisfied with these conditions, and he gladly agreed to them. And when Oscar asked what Charlie would do if he lost, the guy just took a glass of sparkling wine in his hands and drank it in a gulp, because he was sure that he would never lose, and there was no point in discussing such a question because in exactly five days Oscar's life would no longer be the same. In principle, Oscar was not frightened by such strong self-confidence of his opponent. He is primarily determined to take revenge, and he has absolutely no time to think about what he can really play. This whole situation pretty much amused Mr. Fan, young people are so ambitious, but the most important thing is not to forget about safety. By the way, Oscar is one of the three best fighters in the department, he was able to reach level 10 by the age of 25, which is considered a very serious result. Level 10 this means that the man is at the stage of building a foundation, he is a master who is not afraid of heaven or earth. Fan was very curious to know if the guy had enough strength to fight a fighter of this level. Charlie said confidently that he had enough skills, because they had improved a lot recently, the only disadvantage was the lack of physical strength but five days would be enough time to make up for it. After these words, Mr. Fan confessed that he liked Charlie even more now, and that he had a communion and a future waiting for him very soon. Julia then remarked that the guy must be happy, since her father really liked him. Also at that moment one of the workers told her some rather sad news. 
In general, for some reason they were unable to get a ticket to the concert that the girl had asked for so much. Of course, she could not just leave it like that and attack the bodyguard. Since it was the girl's favorite performer, she was much more offended than usual. By chance, Charlie heard what they were fighting about and said that he could help them get tickets to the concert. Julia wondered how the guy was going to turn it around, because he wasn't even from their province. At the same moment a brilliant idea comes into her head. Charlie is probably just secretly dating this singer, and that's why he can get tickets. To be honest, the guy didn't expect such a setup, you'd think you'd just want to help a man, and he'd bury you in the middle of nowhere. Charlie immediately raised his hands up and said that it was not so, that they had only business relations and nothing more. Even Emily was interested in this answer. She wanted to know what the phrase, strictly business, meant. Well, to put it mildly, the man is stumped. He needs to come up with something fast. In a matter of seconds, Emily came right up to him, and immediately asked a second question about how Charlie met the singer. Well, he's totally screwed, plus Julia's also pushing and giving in. Since the guy was being squeezed from all sides, it was urgent to get started. In the end he told about everything that happened then, from the contract with the sisters to the use of techniques to cure the singer's grandfather. Based on this story, Emily realized that Forever Charlie was perfect for meeting all sorts of beautiful girls. But as a minimum it wasn't really a dating, but only a struggle for the opportunity to get a plant. In the meantime, Julia began to admire the guy even more, and now she was sure that the man in front of her was not a cheater, but a real man who could even get her tickets to the concert she wanted to attend. In that case, Charlie suggested that she not waste a minute and write to her right away. Before that happens, the little girl asks to hear her. No matter how powerful Charlie is, he shouldn't let himself put sadness in Emily's head anyway, so the best solution is to call the singer and invite her here, that all together to discuss the matter. Charlie decided not to argue with her, and immediately agreed to these conditions although he did not really see the need to ask the girl to come in person. After quite a long period of time, the singer finally got to Mr. Fan's house. Honestly speaking, Charlie thought that she would not come and began to worry a lot. But when Grace knocked on the front door, the guy was really relieved. As usual, she was completely disguised so that the fans wouldn't follow her, because with such a level of popularity as she had, it's basically contraindicated to go out alone. The girls, to put it mildly, were also a little bit waiting and very tired. The reason it took Grace so long to arrive was rather trivial. For some reason, finding the place had been difficult for her, and the security was strict, so she had to stand at the door for a long time. Even her famous face didn't help, so she assumed that the owner of the house wasn't the last person in the world. After hearing her name, Grace hesitated and then realized that one of the members of her fan club was standing in front of her right now. She also said that she reads all Julia's letters and thanked her for her warm and sincere support. The little girl was very pleased to hear such words, because for percent 90 she was sure that the singer does not even read her messages, but as it turned out, she even remembers her. On the background of this pleasant news the girl even began to go tears of happiness, because she really likes this singer and wishes her only the best. Grace was just as pleased to know that she had such loyal fans. It was an honor to meet at least one of them. Then her gaze fell on Emily, her stern look making it clear that she didn't want Grace to stay here too long, much less spend too much time with Charlie. Looking at all this from the outside, the guy immediately realized that they are unlikely to be friends, and in advance began to ask the Almighty to help him in this awkward situation. In general, the singer came here under a certain pretext, namely to get medicine for further treatment of his grandfather. In order not to seem indifferent to her, the guy decided to behave rather rudely and asked her to leave because their relationship was purely business and it made absolutely no sense for them to stay for a long time. To be honest, such indifference really upset the girl. Can't she really sit down for a minute? At least to make this meeting happen the singer postponed the date of her personal concert, and the guy didn't even appreciate it. Since the girl really came here because of the medicine, the postponement of the concert date is not a valid argument for the guy. 
since he had already handed over the medicine, all Grace had to do was pay for it and leave as soon as possible, because this humble dwelling wouldn't be able to accommodate a guest as important as her. That answer really made her think, surely there must be some good reason for his indifference. Then the singer turned her attention to Emily. Finally she saw for the first time the girl Charlie talks about so often, and she's a real beauty. But she didn't think that was a barrier, because Grace had talent and strength, and such positive qualities could only be seen in units. In her opinion, she thinks she's as good as Emily. As long as it's a frank conversation, there should be frank answers. Charlie said matter-of-factly, Grace is the pinnacle of the world, and in his eyes she's just an ordinary person buying medicine, so don't talk about yourself like you're trying to sell yourself. So she put the ticket on the table and said she had to go and do her own thing. And about the next supply of medicine, the guys decided to talk about it at another meeting. At least the fact that the man had agreed to meet her again had already made the singer melt, and all the anger was gone. Charlie also said that Julia wasn't the only one who wanted to attend her concert, so they needed to get some more tickets. Of course she agreed and said that her assistants would bring them later. In the end the guys said goodbye, but because the meeting wasn't the warmest, Grace slammed the door hard when she left. The first thing she did as soon as she got into the car was to ask her assistants to send Charlie a couple more concert tickets. She couldn't believe that she couldn't charm such a talented guy, and she never had any problems with that before. To remedy this situation, the girl decided to go for drastic measures, namely to use a special bottle, which she bought recently. Master said that this small bottle will help her keep her popularity for at least ten years. Grace was sure she could use it to keep any man she wanted. As it turns out later, this potion has no positive effect on Grace. It was made to effectively spy on Charlie, with the help of this singer. Its creator is the same terrible grandfather who kidnapped Charlie's ex-wife's sister and destroyed Ian along with his father. And now when the time is right... He'll do anything to destroy the guy as well as all those who lost their lives before him. According to his calculations in three days, on the day of Grace's grand concert, Charlie should lose his life. It is still unknown how exactly it will happen, but this old grandfather definitely came up with some cunning plan. In general, after three days, the singer finally went on stage and began to sing for her favorite fans. It was really a very large-scale event gathered a whole soccer stadium of listeners. Julia watched the concert from the VIP box for the first time in her life, and she liked it a lot. Emily, in turn, was also pleasantly surprised, because the view from here was quite good, but the atmosphere was a little different. Since Julia liked everything very much, she made a brilliant conclusion. From now on, she should let Charlie make such calls more often. In general, Grace was very generous and gave them more than twenty tickets, by the way. To be a VIP guest is really very prestigious. When a person does not have a lot of money in principle, he does not even think about it. But whoever tried this kind of vacation is unlikely to want to buy ordinary tickets. On the way here nothing bad happened, but for some reason this is the place where the guy gets a strange feeling of panic. Usually if something like that happens it's not good, but let's hope for the best. By the way, Grace's outfit was just stunning, that white dress fits her perfectly. At that moment a very emotional song started playing, it looked so beautiful that Julia couldn't hold back her emotions and started crying. Looking at Grace she realized that this girl was as beautiful as the words of her song, they seemed to merge into one. Then Charlie started to cry without noticing, and at the same time very sad thoughts started to appear in his head, which automatically put him in a depressed state. Charlie's emotional resilience has allowed him to come to his senses, and he's starting to realize that something is definitely wrong. Looking around, he notices that Emily is also crying, and talks out loud about how she envies people who are able to express their feelings through song. There's definitely something wrong with this track. Literally in an instant, a very happy atmosphere turned into a very depressing one. All the people started to sink, and instead of relaxing they thought about their problems. Charlie has to find out who's behind this as soon as possible. Because this can't go on much longer.
Using his skills, the boy was able to see that Grace had some kind of magical red line connected to her, so now at least he knew exactly where all the negativity was coming from. Then Charlie warned Emily that he'd be leaving the room for a while and asked her to be very careful. Of course Emily tried to stop him, but not this time, because she had to act, and as soon as possible. When the guy was already downstairs, he lost sight of the red line he had seen earlier. At the same moment some girl clung to him like a nipple and started touching him wherever she wanted. Since Charlie is a very loyal young man, he immediately did his best to get her off his back, the first time he just threw her in the opposite direction. This woman should stop thinking that she can bewitch him with her charms. Charlie gives her exactly five seconds to break the spell and explain to him why she's doing it. To put it mildly, she was surprised, because even grandmasters cannot resist her charms. Now this thrill-seeker fully realized that the rumors about Charlie it's really not just a rumor. In the course of the conversation the guy managed to find out that this girl was sent here by someone to fulfill some bad tasks. He had originally assumed that the elder had sent her, but the girl made it clear that he hadn't. She said she had just decided to practice magic here, she needed human energy for that, and since there were so many people here at the moment, there was no better place to be. Charlie decided not to even listen to this nonsense, and tried to scare the girl by showing her a little bit of his potential. In general, if she told the truth, Charlie might let her live, but if she continued to lie, God only knows what would happen to her next. This girl is a disciple of the Xianming clan. She sold those enchanted perfumes to Grace, under the pretext that they would enhance her popularity. But in fact it's actually a special potion that her clan uses to absorb human energy. It doesn't last long on its own, and only when she's singing, but it's not harmful to the body either. Interesting, so if it's not unhealthy, then why doesn't the girl use it herself? The thing is, she's not really a good singer, so it's definitely not an option for her. Then this girl said that she would show where the elder practiced if the guy would spare her. In principle, it was quite a favorable exchange, so he agreed without hesitation. Such information would definitely not be unnecessary. In general, to find it you need to get to the foot of the mountain Linlon, then standing with your back to the wooden box to go right exactly twelve steps then another turn to the right and straight eight steps. At the end Charlie should see in front of him a passage, and the girl at this point will be looking after him mountains. After the guy with accuracy to perfection repeated everything as she said, he really came to the right place. The clan apprentice really hadn't deceived him, or she had, but she was trying to catch him in a trap, and now we would find out. Charlie was moving through the cave with great care, and suddenly the rocks poured out of the cave right behind him. Of course it was hardly like a trap, but it was scary. At the very least the first thing to do is to see if anyone else is here. As if by chance Charlie saw countless pills on the way, at first glance it was just a jackpot, but it is not known what quality they are and how effective they are, it may well be that they are practically useless. Since his interest was piqued, he decided to try a couple right here, since the elder was taking them, they must be of normal quality. After taking the pills, Charlie felt his energy increase, but it was so low that it was practically useless. It's really too little, you'd have to eat at least a hundred of them to level up, maybe even a couple hundred. Then the guy comes up with a brilliant idea, maybe just eat them all and save someone the trouble. Of course it's a brilliant idea in itself, to deprive the owner of the pills of the ability to level up. After some time, sitting on the mountain, the girl noticed that for some mystical reason it started to snow outside. Of course, the generator of this New Year's mood was Charlie, because he began to raise himself level by level, and the snow, bringing him to Nirvana, became a guide for him to a better life. It was really an incredible idea to start receiving these pills en masse, so long as no one from the enemy clan came here now. During the cultivation, the guy met his dragon. He was surprised to say the least because they hadn't seen each other for only a couple of days, and his personal progress was quite high. In honor of the big event dragon he said he could show the guy how to use a skill called insane stroke. In general, this skill is a creation that surpasses any technique invented by humans. A person who possesses it can safely be called virtually invulnerable. 
when suddenly, right while taking a new skill, the guy heard some strange sounds behind him. Frankly speaking, it pissed him off, because in no way one should be distracted during such a responsible procedure. As it turned out it was Anna's sister, completely tied up with ropes, and with some rag in her mouth. When the process was completely finished, the guy immediately ran up to her and began to release her. The girl urged him to do it as soon as possible, because the elder was about to come, and if he did, there would be a fight, so the most important thing was to leave the cave in time. In the process of releasing him, while there was time, Charlie inquired about Jack, where he might be, at least roughly. The girl said that the elder had thought him useless, and had sent him somewhere else. In that case the boy promised to get her out, but urged her to stay out of the way, and this was just the perfect opportunity to use the new technique. Without thinking long Charlie fired a powerful magic shot, after which he managed to break through the thick stone layer of the mountain, it was done in order to leave this place as soon as possible. The flow of energy would only be powerful that at one point this dark night was light as I am with him. Well, in the future with this powerful skill should be careful, and use it only in extreme cases, because such power is quite difficult to control, and quite accidentally you can shake an innocent person. As suddenly in the cave sharply began to crumble rocks, it says only one thing that this place is about to collapse, you need to leave immediately. At the same moment the elder came into the cave, he didn't understand what the strange tremors were, or why they were happening, then he saw that someone had eaten all his pills, which he had been collecting for quite some time, and expected to raise his level quite a bit in the future. Somehow the elder just sensed that Charlie had done it, probably because no one else would have done such a desperate act. Meanwhile, the concert was finally over, and Emily was getting worried, because Charlie never just disappears. Julia tried to calm her down by saying that the guy probably just had a tummy ache that's why he was gone so long. That's a possibility, but Charlie and Emily were having an affair, and her heart told her that something bad had happened. Suddenly a guy walks into the girl's room. Of course Emily immediately inquired about what happened to him, but since it's a pretty long story to tell there just wasn't time. He also had his ex-wife's sister on his shoulders, and you could tell she was so visibly unwell. Charlie asked to call an ambulance as soon as possible, or the girl could lose her life. And while the ambulance will go, the guy would like to try to give her a chance to survive with the help of his magical abilities. Then the same night the girl was taken to the local hospital, on the morning she was visited by Anna, who was insanely happy about the fact that her sister is safe and sound, at the moment is next to her. The sister's reunion is a solution, and hopefully they won't have any more problems and won't have to be rescued. Now the number one priority is to find Jack, who's probably not on the best of terms right now. On their way out, the boys met Grace, who had heard about yesterday's incident and was here to see how Charlie was doing. Of course the guy said it was fine, but even if it was bad, he'd still say it was fine. But it should be noted, the singer arrived just in time. Charlie urged her to show him the bottle of perfume she was currently wearing. As Grace realized that the perfume was not ordinary, she pretended not to know what it was about. In that case Charlie decided to tell her. If she doesn't want to lose her life, she has to get rid of them, because everything in this world has its price, and you have to think for a moment about the price of success of your career. After hearing the information she starts crying, the girl confessed that she used them rarely, and if Charlie hadn't broken her heart that day, she wouldn't have touched them. In any case, all these fairy tales are not interesting to the guy, and he once again asked the girl to give him the perfume, good this time she agreed without any problems. After the guy took it in his hands, a ghost literally started to come out of the bottle. Under the influence of the strongest magic he just couldn't be there anymore. Everyone standing around was shocked by what they saw, especially Grace, who couldn't believe she had been carrying around such a horrible object for so long. All this time, the phantom was giving the girl good luck, but in return he was absorbing her spiritual energy and constantly shortening the years of her life. The whole situation made her wonder how she dared to trust an unknown man and buy such a supposedly magical fragrance from him. And when the phantom heard those words, he immediately flew in her direction.